It's baseball time again from Fox Field in Lynchburg. The University of Lynchburg Hornets getting set to host the Greensboro Pride. Kyle Haney hanging out with you on an overcast day in Central Virginia. We're getting set to have some fun. Lynchburg was in action yesterday on the road. They beat Hampton Sydney 11-0. It was a great conference win for the Hornets. But now they're back at home, undefeated at home this season, 17-0 at Fox Field. And they put that undefeated streak on the line again today against the Greensboro Pride. Greensboro's been playing decent baseball this year. They come in with a losing record, 16-18, and 18, but they've won four in a row. They got their last victory on Monday against Southern Virginia. And, yeah, we get to see the guys having some fun before the game. I don't think the... I don't think the winning streak's causing too much stress for anybody on the Hornets ball club. They're having a good time here pre-game, and everybody's in good spirits as we get a look at Brandon Garcia there on the left. We'll be talking about Mr. Garcia, an 18-game hitting streak that he will bring into the contest today. So we are very, very excited about baseball here from Fox Field. Got the starting lineups going on right now. We'll bring it back after the national anthem. First pitch is next. You're going to see it all live on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school, it's about developing yourself as a person altogether. Great moments are born from great opportunity. That's what you have here tonight. That's what you've earned here tonight. This is your time. Now go out there and take it. Every great college has a great city. For Lynchburg, we are near urban areas with lots of restaurants, shopping, and events. Plus, we are one of the top schools in the area. Come see for yourself. To them, the whole world looks like an opportunity, one to be seized, built upon, and made better for their sport and the people around it. To student athletes, every opportunity is a chance to change what could be and show the world what opportunity can do.
The Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network is proud to present baseball non-conference action between Lynchburg and Greensboro. Kyle Haney hanging out with you on a Wednesday afternoon. We've got a full crew. We've got more home games here at Fox Field that we are excited about. Greensboro today, it's an ODAC doubleheader Saturday where the Hornets will host Guilford and then one more against North Carolina Wesleyan last or next week. Yesterday, Lynchburg in action against Hampton Sydney and Brandon Garcia was instrumental in the victory. Three for five yesterday with a walk, scored twice, drove in a run, and there's a shot at the shortstop. The freshman phenom, Brandon Garcia, an 18-game hitting streak, and he will put that on the line again today. We love talking about Brandon Garcia, and you get a lot of chances to talk about him because he's had such an outstanding season. It'll be Josh Jorman on the mound. He's had an outstanding season hitting and pitching so far this year. This will be start number five for Josh Jorman. He enters with a 4.76 earned run average, 17 innings of work. He's kind of been that wild card guy. We didn't really know what to expect from Josh Jorman when the year began pitching wise. Knew a, a little bit more about what we were gonna get from Josh swinging the bat and playing first base. But on the mound, Josh Jorman was a bit of an unknown. He has pitched really, really well in four key starts. He's been kind of this midweek non-conference starter. That's sort of the role that Josh Jorman has fallen into. And he's got a great defense behind him to work with. Battery mate today will be Riley O'Donovan. Riley O'Donovan has been DHing quite a bit this season, but we haven't seen him catching since I think early March. I think a doubleheader against York. Riley O'Donovan caught one half of that doubleheader. So it's great to see Riley O'Donovan back behind the dish again and around the diamond in the infield to be Eric Hyatt at first base. Ben Jones plays second. Ben Jones is a freshman having an outstanding season who we will discuss. Brandon Garcia at shortstop. You get Gavin Collins at third base. The leadoff man Brody Gardner, the left fielder for Greensboro, will swing on that and foul it away. In the outfield today for Lynchburg, the All-American Avery Neves in left, Carson Atkins in center, and it is Logan Webster playing right field today. Brody Gardner, the leadoff hitter for the Greensboro Pride, coached by Chris Fennessy in his second season. They have won four in a row. They have two ball games left in the regular season. Lynchburg has three. But Greensboro putting together a pretty good season. They're fighting to get above 500. So I'm sure that'll be on their minds. Spoiling Lynchburg's undefeated home record will probably be on their minds as well. We get an early look at the defensive prowess of Brandon Garcia at short, but he can't get to that one as it's ripped into center field. So Brody Gardner is on with a leadoff base hit. Brody Gardner now has a five game hit streak. So he's swinging a good bat and here comes Louis Barini, the second baseman for Greensboro. Left-handed swinger here against the left-handed pitcher of Josh Jorman. Breaking ball misses low and away for Jorman. Lynchburg, an 11-0 win yesterday against Hampton Sydney on the road. It was a game that started close, like, like most ball games do. There were some tense moments early. Lynchburg with a scoring explosion in inning number three. They put up three in the third, and then they turned around and scored five in the fifth. At that point, it was an 8-0 advantage. So the game wasn't completely out of reach by the fifth inning, but uh, things were looking grim for Hampton Sydney and the Tigers never really got anything going offensively. For Lynchburg on the mound yesterday, Brandon Pond started, went four innings, gave up two hits, walked four, struck out five. Baylor Cumby came in and threw two fabulous innings for Lynchburg. He ended up getting the win, and then it was Alex Giannascoli with three innings to finish, picking up his first save of his career. So the first career win for Baylor Cumby yesterday. Congratulations to Baylor and a first career save for Alex Giannascoli. Both those guys have really been throwing the ball much better out of the bullpen lately. They're, uh, they're really rounding into form here at a great time for Lynchburg. Tournament time, the, the bullpen always gets stressed a little bit more. You can never have enough pitching. So it's nice to see those guys for Lynchburg really finding their form and throwing the ball pretty well with some velocity too. I know Baylor Cumbie and Alex Giannascoli were both in the upper 80s for most of the day yesterday. Here's a ball lifted into foul territory that Gavin Collins is under. Pretty easy grab in the left field, or not left field, but just left of third base there. 
for Gavin Collins, and it's out number one of the inning. Kai Hay in the right fielder will hit third. He is a sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. A lot of young guys on this Greensboro team. Hopefully we can run down their roster construction some as this afternoon goes on. 18 freshmen for Greensboro. There are 13 sophomores, 10 juniors, but only three seniors. So the breakdown is, is a youth movement. It's a bottom heavy roster there with a lot of freshmen and sophomore. But this man, Kai Hayen, the right fielder, is one guy that actually did play quite a bit last season. He hit 279 last year with three homers for the pride. One, one count as Jorman gets the breaking ball across for a strike. Swung on and hit into virtually the same spot for Gavin Collins. He'll actually drift a bit closer to his own dugout and home plate to pull in another one. So back but back to back pop up secured by the third baseman, Gavin Collins. And now all of a sudden Greensboro has two outs. Here's Connor Morehouse, a player that we're keeping our eyes on for Greensboro, comes into the game hitting 331, and he is one of those three seniors. Kansas City, Missouri, he's had 12 multi-hit games on the season, and four of them have been in the month of April. Connor Morehouse swinging a great bat right now for Greensboro. He'll hit against Josh Jorman with a runner on first. Nice shot at it right there. Standard lead from Brody Gardner at first. Lynchburg's infield at regular depth. Outfield shaded slightly the opposite way on Connor Morehouse. Oh, one count as Josh Dorman gets ahead. Nice off-speed pitch. Just got under Riley O'Donovan, but Gardner not ready to go to second. He shut it down pretty early and went back to first. Maybe a missed opportunity there as Riley O'Donovan blocked that ball but then lost track of it briefly as it got under his body and around the umpire. 0-2 count. See what Josh Jorman goes with. Long hold, fires. It was a back foot slider kind of a concept for Jorman. Nice stop by Riley O'Donovan. Good slide there. I think he learned something from the previous pitch. Good technique. Stayed down on that one a little bit longer. Tucked that chin, looked that ball right into his belly button there. 1-2 count now on Morehouse. Might be the same pitch coming here from Jorman. Nope, I think it was just a fastball that he was laid on and it's a strikeout. Josh Jorman will leave a runner stranded. One hit for Greensboro, one left on. No Lynchburg errors. And we're still scoreless after the Greensboro half of the first inning. James C. Fox Field on the campus of the University of Lynchburg. And the Hornets are undefeated here this season, 17-0 at home. Pride trying to spoil that. Bryson Schramm will be the starting pitcher for Greensboro. This will be start number two, appearance number eight total. The ERA is a little bit inflated for Bryson Schramm. He's pitched just over seven innings this season. Walked 10, struck out four. He'll be facing a very, very talented Lynchburg lineup that scored 11 runs yesterday against Hampton Sydney. Uh, the lineup is slightly different though, as are all the lineups for Lynchburg. That's been a talking point all season baseball fans. Lynchburg rarely uses the same lineup. I think there's only been two lineups that have been duplicated this season for Lynchburg. And the one today goes like this. Brandon Garcia leading off at short. Ben Jones 
the fellow caped crusader, Batman and Robin duo will bat second and play second. Avery Neves is in left, hitting third. The cleanup man is Eric Hyatt at first base. Riley O'Donovan catching, catching, hitting fifth. Gavin Collins will bat sixth and play third base. We saw Collins with a couple pop-up grabs in the first inning. Logan Webster in the lineup today, hitting seventh and playing right field. First start for Eddie Gimble, DHing. Congrats, Eddie Gimble. Number 20 will DH and hit eighth for Lynchburg. And the nine-hole man is the center fielder, Carson Atkins. Ball one there as Brandon Garcia watches it go by. The freshman from Durham, North Carolina, an outstanding game yesterday on the road at Hampton, Sydney. Three hits. He has really been swinging it lately. He's been swinging it his entire freshman season. But Brandon Garcia just lately has seemingly hit another gear. He's got 10 multi-hit games in this 18-game hitting streak. That dates all the way back to early March. Missed some time due to injury. He's back out there now. Swings and fouls that one off the catcher's mitt. 2-2 two -two count with nobody out. Lynchburg in the home reds with the white pants. And Greensboro with the road gray pants to go with the green top and the black and green hat. Here comes a two-strike delivery from Schramm. Hit the spot there. Dibbled the corner, and it's strike one. Backwards K there for Brandon Garcia. That is rare and hard to do. But he'll walk back to the dugout, and Ben Jones will step in. Speaking of hot hitters, Ben Jones, the ODAC Player of the Week award for his exploits last week. And in his last five games, Ben Jones is hitting over 500, 555 to be exact. That's 10 for 18. He had an outstanding weekend up at Shenandoah. The Hornets got a split on the road against the Hornets. Lynchburg won game one against Shenandoah. The home team Hornets from Shenandoah took game two. But in that second game, Ben Jones was three for three with a homer. Last time we were on LHSN in this ballpark, Ben Jones had two triples and then scored the winning run in fine fashion against William Peace a week ago. So Ben Jones has been up to a lot. He is also a freshman. Seven game hitting streak for Benny Bonds, Ben Jones. Ground ball up the middle, could be a tough play. Throwing on the run and the out is made. Louis Barini with the throw there, second base, and Moses Lopez, the good stretch at first to pull it in. Avery Neves steps up. The left fielder hitting third like he always does for the Lynchburg Hornets. Yeah, good grab there by Lopez to keep that left foot anchored to the bag. There's a hit by pitch as breaking ball did not break. And Avery Neves has reached base for the 35th game this season. 36 games played, Avery Neves has been on base for 35 of them. That's either the hit, walk, or hit by pitch. Second game against Roanoke is the only game this year that Avery Neves has not reached base. He was on base every game last season. So the incredible consistency from Avery Neves continues. Well, that one might might fall into the gift category there. Pop up by Eric Hyatt, swinging on the first pitch. And the catcher, Miles Vacheron, will haul it in for Greensboro to end the inning. No score after one complete from Fox Field on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Think a private education is too expensive? Think again. At the University of Lynchburg, you can get a personalized education for the cost of a state school. If you're commuting and you get our top scholarships, you could pay much less. And you get all that without the hassle of giant lecture halls. Our faculty know your name here and do more than just teach. You might even do research together and plan out your next career moves.
overcast skies here in Lynchburg today. We've got some rain coming on Friday. Saturday's forecast looks okay. I think our doubleheader against Guilford will go on as planned Saturday. There were some thoughts about trying to maybe move that around, but it looks like the rain is now going to be Friday and Sunday in Central Virginia. So Saturday may actually be the day to play for Lynchburg and the Quakers of Guilford. We're looking forward to that ODAC doubleheader. And Lynchburg is at the top of the standings in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. They got a one-game lead on Shenandoah and Randolph-Macon. They split with both those ball clubs. And Lynchburg will try to maintain that and get another regular season ODAC championship. Lynchburg in conference this season, 17-3. Shenandoah and Macon are both 16-4. So it could all come down to this final weekend. I believe Shenandoah is on the road at Ferrum this weekend. So we'll try to update those scores on Saturday. That, that'll be a fun day of baseball. The, the end of the season is always an exciting time, but when you've got a conference title hanging in the grasp, well, it makes it a little bit more fun. It adds an element of drama, I think, that we're all – Looking forward to. This is a non-conference game here between Lynchburg and Greensboro, but still plenty on the line. One-two count for Josh Jorman against Moses Lopez. The left-handed swinging first baseman for Greensboro takes ball two. He made a good snag in the first inning there to get Ben Jones out on a 4-3 put out. You already see, I think you can see on your screen, Moses Lopez with some size. Good range. That, that's going to help over there at first base. Seems to turn the bat loose pretty nicely as well. Mr. Lopez hitting 271 on the season. One homer, four doubles. This is start number 18 for number 24, Moses Lopez. He'll swing on that and foul it away. Moses Lopez, another Fort Lauderdale, Florida guy like Kai Hayen, the uh, right fielder in the starting lineup. So a couple Florida guys in the starting lineup here for the Greensboro Pride. Just over two hours from Greensboro up to Lynchburg. Pretty easy trip. Jorman will get opposite field contact. Gavin Collins fields on one bounce. Strong throw across, and it's out number one. Gavin Collins made a couple good defensive plays yesterday in Lynchburg's 11-0 win over Hampton Sydney. Yeah, good shuffle of the feet, strong throw from Gavin Collins. He started a double play. Lynchburg's used those double plays really nicely this season. They've turned 33 of them, the Lynchburg defense. They really come in handy. They always seem to come at big times in close games too, it feels like. And just for reference, the Lynchburg hitters have hit into 22 double plays. Ball one for the lefty Josh Jorman. Oak Hill, Virginia, another good stop from Riley O'Donovan Ware in that one. And he'll get it back to Jorman, 2-0 count. The hitter is Miles Vacheron, the catcher for Greensboro. Miles Vacheron, another Florida guy, Land Lakes, Florida. So it's uh, interesting to get three Florida guys in the starting lineup, and maybe more. Now i got to double check the notes and the records here to find out how many other Florida players. Clearly, head coach Chris Fennessy has spent some time scouting the Sunshine State and identifying some talent, bringing them to Greensboro College. 2-2 two -two count. Inside corner hit, and it's strike three looking but Sharon down strikeout number two for Josh Jorman. There's two gone in the top of the second inning. Hudson Powell is the center fielder stepping in for Greensboro. Josh Jorman really doesn't strike out a ton coming into the game. It's 12 Ks and 10 walks coming into this one. So now the number is... 14 strikeouts to still 10 walks. Josh Jorman, no free passes yet so far. 0-1 start on Hudson Powell. Jorman, another one of those guys, all from the stretch. Set position like you would 
used with runners on base. He does it with nobody on base. Cue ball that will stay foul. And now all of a sudden it's an 0-2 count. Mechanically, Josh Jorman, I think, is just funky enough from that left side. He's got kind of that fast tempo, the quick, quick leg kick and the pump with the arms there before the ball comes out. And I think it bothers hitters just enough. Here's an away target from Riley O'Donovan. Direct hit from Josh Jorman, strike three. Got another one looking. It's K number three. And Greensboro, nothing doing in their half of the second inning. We're going to the bottom of the second. It's Lynchburg Hornets baseball on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. What you're missing. Riley O'Donovan will lead off the bottom of the second inning for the Lynchburg Hornets. Great to see Riley O'Donovan catching again. Just something that Coach Lucas Jones mentioned. We, we would probably see Riley O'Donovan as the backstop before the season ended. You've got Holden Fiedler, who does a lot of the catching. We'll, we'll, we'll say the bulk of the catching here, and then we'll go get the numbers and it's tell you exactly how many games Holden Fiedler has, uh, has started. It's 21 starts this season behind the dish for Holden Fiedler. Riley O'Donovan, this will be start number 23 for him, but most of those DHing. He'll pull this breaking ball down the line into the corner. This is going to be two for Riley O'Donovan. Left fielder mishandled briefly, but Riley's still going to have to stay at second base. Good job by Riley O'Donovan waiting on the breaking ball and then yanking it down the left field line. Pretty good piece of hitting right there for a double. Lynchburg had two doubles yesterday. Yeah, there you could see the hesitation on that replay. Just that little twitch allowed O'Donovan to time that one up, stay on it, and keep it fair down that left field line. So one double already for Lynchburg is their first hit of the ball game as Gavin Collins will swing at the first offering and shoot it into the Lynchburg dugout. I hope everybody's okay in there. You got to you gotta really have the fast twitch going when you're in that dugout and you're so close. 0-1 count for Gavin Collins. He enters the game hitting 261. He had a double yesterday. Thought Gavin Collins had some – oh, watch out. Hold that thought as Gavin Collins – We'll just bang this one into left field. Riley O'Donovan on the move. Play at the plate. Catcher fields. O'Donovan slid out in front of home to try to get around it, but he is out. Good, strong throw from the left fielder, Brody Gardner, and the catcher, Miles Vacheron. Pretty good technique there behind the dish to grab that one and apply the tag. So I think it's going to be a double for Gavin Collins as he waited on one and ripped it into left field. Lynchburg bats might be heating up early in this one. It's back-to-back -back doubles, but nothing to show for it as Riley O'Donovan is erased at home. I think it was probably a pretty good plan of attack to send Riley O'Donovan. I thought he got a good read off the bat, good turn around third base. And the left fielder, Brody Gardner, had some struggles with the previous play. So you're thinking, well, let's put some pressure on him. Let's see what kind of throw he can make. But Brody Gardner... Put it on target, or close enough to the target anyway, to get Riley O'Donovan out. Bypassed the cut man. It was a high throw. But it was accurate enough to get the outfield assist. Logan Webster hit by pitch. 
He'll trot to first. That's the second hit batter of the game. And the total number on the season now is up to 70. Lynchburg has been hit 70 times as a team to this game. Eddie Gimble in the batter's box here, taking ball one. Eddie Gimble on the season. It's start number one, but appearance number eight. He is hitting 250 at the moment. That's one for four. He can increase that ad, uh, that average dramatically here with one swing of the bat, or maybe multiple swings of the bat in the game. 1-1 one, one count as Gimble takes that one on the outside corner. Gavin Collins leads off second. Logan Webster was just hit. He's at first. First baseman playing behind Webster. Rest of the infield double play depth on Eddie Gimble. Ball two away and in the dirt. Bryson Schramm started the ball game. He hit Avery Neves in the first, but other than that, it was a fairly quiet inning. This one, much different. Two doubles, a hit batter. Greensboro has recorded an out at home plate. Gimble up the middle. This could be two. Soft flip there. Throw to first. Gimble did not beat it. Double play ball. Textbook stuff there from Greensboro. Six, four, three. And the inning is over. We are still deadlocked through two complete at Fox Field. A lot of people go to the universities to find something to be a part of while getting their education. And when you come here, Lynchburg is that something, it becomes a family. It's what the school's really good at doing. An exciting inning for Lynchburg. They get two doubles, but no runs come across. It was a 7-2 outfield assist to throw out Riley O'Donovan at the plate on Gavin Collins' double. Hit batter from Logan Webster, but then Eddie Gimble bounces into the double play, and we're still, score we're still scoreless through two. Here's the shot, good throw, and plenty of time there for the catcher, Basharin, to apply the tag. Riley O'Donovan at, at that point trying to slide around it to the basically the pitcher's mound side of home plate was probably a good idea because he saw that the throw pulled the catcher a, a bit towards the Lynchburg backstop, but it was just too soon to really get around it, and you can't run over the catcher anymore. I guess the only other thing Riley O'Donovan could have done, maybe, maybe stop and try to get in a rundown. Perhaps Gavin Collins could get to third base that way. There might be some value in that, or maybe you hope that Greensboro botches the rundown. But that's all in hindsight. I mean, that's a split-second deal. I think Riley O'Donovan really did the right thing, trying to slide into home plate and maybe get around the tag. Ball two from Josh Jorman. He's fallen behind 2-0. The hitter is Cam Watts, third baseman for Greensboro. Adam Weber is Greensboro's leading hitter, but he is not in the lineup. Adam Weber leads them an average at 356, but not in the lineup today. So we were looking forward to seeing Adam Weber, but that'll have to wait another day, or perhaps he'll enter in off the bench. We'll, we didn't get the injury report or anything from Chris Fennessy, but it's Cam Watts who's fouled this one away. This will be start number 21 for Cam Watts. He's hitting under 200 on the season, but playing third base today and playing a pretty good third base this season. 2-2 two -two count. Here comes Josh Jorman. Long hold. Strike three. Good block there by Riley O'Donovan. Tried to run down Watts with a tag, but ends up throwing it halfway down to first base anyway. Three straight Ks for Josh Jorman. Four in the game, but three in a row dating back to last inning. Nine-hole hitter is Gavin Fleming, the shortstop. Hitting left-handed for Greensboro.
Gavin Fleming. This is start number seven for Gavin Fleming. So both teams may be adjusting the lineup slightly, perhaps, different combinations. Even late in the season, teams are still trying to do that, trying to figure out who's going to get hot for tournament time, still give guys opportunities to maybe catch fire. And in that tournament, yeah, it's rare that you're going to be able to just use a straight nine each game, same same nine every game. you got to adjust a little bit, swinging a miss there from Gavin Fleming. And I'm saying that tournament, if you're a team like Lynchburg, who's had a lot of success, you're hoping it's more than one tournament. You're hoping it's the ODAC tournament and then an NCAA regional after that and then hopefully a College World Series. You're hoping to play three tournaments if you're Lynchburg or a team of that caliber. Gavin Fleming swing and miss, and that's strikeout number four in a row for Josh Jorman. Five total. Brody Gardner, the leadoff man, is back up to face Josh Jorman, who seems to be having it figured out on the mound here for Lynchburg. Jorman, four quality starts. The record just says he's just 1-0, and oh, but the other three starts were pretty good. Most recent one last week against William Peace, I don't think he was completely thrilled with the way he threw the baseball. But he seems to really be dealing it nicely today so far. Way out in front was Brody Gardner. He hit that one off the end of the bat, and it's a 1-1 count. One thing I like about Josh Chorman, I don't know if he's doing it intentionally or not, but he varies the whole time even with nobody on first base. That's something you do typically – to stop the running game is, is you hold one there in the set position for a long time, four or five seconds. The next one, you just come set for half a beat and then go. Josh Jorman seems to be doing that with nobody on base. It's actually a good way to disturb the hitter's timing, disrupt the hitter's rhythm a little bit. Swinging a foul ball here from Brody Gardner. So some might just be natural. Josh Jorman's not going to deliver till he's ready, but some might be Intentional to throw off that hitter a bit. I really like it. 2-2 two -two count with two outs. See how long Josh Jorman holds right here. Deep breath, ready to fire. This one belted into left. Avery Neves coming on to make the grab. What a play there from Avery Neves. That ball was stung from Brody Gardner. But Avery Neves patrolling left field nicely for the third out. No hits, no runs, no Lynchburg errors, and we're heading to the bottom of the third inning at Fox Field, scoreless. Josh Jorman has thrown three shutout innings on the mound. Lynchburg's had some good defensive work early. So has Greensboro. The Pride gave up back-to-back -back doubles in the last inning. But the left fielder, Brody Gardner, made a nice throw to home plate to get Riley O'Donovan, and then it was a double play. Eddie Gimble, the designated hitter for Lynchburg, rolling into that for outs two and three of the inning. And it's all zeros at the moment. Nine-hole hitter Carson Atkins due up for Lynchburg. Carson Atkins doubled yesterday. And he has cooled a bit. Carson Atkins won an ODAC player of the week earlier this season. He was on an absolute tear there for about an entire month. So Carson Atkins has, has cooled down a little bit. Still hitting 304 on the season. Ten doubles, five homers for Carson Atkins. One of these guys that is a grad student, he's put together an outstanding career. 
He has played 177 games now for Carson Atkins. And that's over the course of four plus years there, the COVID season in there. But just incredible to think about that amount of games. 177 games played for Carson Atkins. He's closing in on 50 extra base hits. He's got a lot of power. Good combo of speed and power, too. Carson Atkins can steal bases. He's an elite defender out there in center field. Just go back to that number, but 177 career games. You think about that, and then you think about Major League Baseball playing 162 in a season. That kind of boggles the mind to think about you can play four or five years in, in college and not get to the amount of games that the big leaguers play in one season. Not that they're going to play 162, but some guys do. 2-0 count here for Carson Atkins. He'll have the green light. Double yesterday on the road, Hampton, Sydney. Atkins didn't like that one, lays off. It's ball three. 3-0 three -oh count. I think the light will still be very green here for Carson Atkins. See if he can get a pitch to sink his teeth into. Greensboro defense, left field's a little bit deeper than normal, but everybody else pretty much normal depth and straight away. Strike one down the middle, 3-1 count. That might have been a straight take, actually, from Carson Atkins. So what do I know? I figured he'd be turning it loose with a 3-0 -oh count, but looked like it might have been a straight take there. Goes after a high one and misses. Bryson Schramm. Still out there for the Greensboro Pride. 16 and 18 this season for Greensboro, but they've won four in a row. So that helps make the record look a little bit better. Gets them closer to 500. 30 hopper here from Atkins. This is going to be bang, bang at first, but Greensboro gets them. Good job by Gavin Fleming to come on. Looked like initially he did not get a great read off the bat, but then came on and basically made kind of a running grab and throw to get Carson Atkins at first base. And you can see by the time Fleming let that one go, he was on the infield grass. Good job to come in on the move and get that to erase the speedy Carson Atkins. One out, second at bat for Brandon Garcia. Struck out looking in his first at bat. That has not been easy to do, strike out Mr. Garcia this season. He's only struck out 11 times. Compare that to 23 walks. That's an incredible ratio. There's a bunch of Lynchburg players that have more walks than strikeouts. Brandon Garcia's hit streak will be on hold after that. Swings and fouls it away to foul territory for out number two. Good catch on the move from Cam Watts. So the pride playing the glove a little bit here so far in this one. Lynchburg still scoreless. Ben Jones could change that with one swing of the bat. I'm sure the Hornets would just take a base runner at this point. Ben Jones, the freshman, grounded out to second in his first at bat. Moved the hip slightly, but didn't take the bat off his shoulder. Strike one. Looked like a breaking ball that just barely missed the zone. Ben Jones, 321 on the season, slugging 628. Ben Jones has five doubles, five homers, two triples. Actually got both those triples in the same game. That was against William Peace last week. Ben Jones hit one to deep to center field and ended up scoring the game-winning run on a pass ball. Lynchburg walked it off against William P. 7-6 the last time we were at this ballpark. Of course, Lynchburg had an emotional doubleheader split with Shenandoah, an extra inning win in game one on Sunday, and then they lost game two. Hornets also in action yesterday against Hampton Sydney, winning 11-0 over the Tigers. So Lynchburg's been up to a lot, really, since the last time we've talked to you on LHSN, folks. But it's been a great season so far, obviously, if you're a Hornet fan, and we've got so much more good stuff still to get to. Jones will foul that one away. The count will remain 2-2 two -two with two outs. On number 21, Ben Jones. Comes another payoff pitch up and away for ball three. Now the count is full. 
to number 21, Ben Jones. Avery Neves on deck. Eric Hyatt hitting fourth in this game if Lynchburg would get that far in the bottom of the third. Oh, breaking ball taken for strike three, and the inning is over. So the Hornets go quietly, three up, three down, in the bottom of the third. Top four on the way next from Fox Field in Lynchburg. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. All zeros through three complete at Fox Field, a defensive duel so far. Lynchburg scored 11 yesterday on the road against Hampton Sydney. I don't think the offensive prowess is in question for the Lynchburg Hornets, but it happens sometimes in baseball. Slow start. Sometimes that back-to-back -back game, too, you, you might not think about that being such a big deal, especially we've already made the, the Major League Baseball connection. You're playing back-to-back -back games all the time there, but they're professionals. These are 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds. Sometimes those back to back games might not always have the complete focus early in the game. And let's give some credit to Greensboro as well, their pitching plan. And Bryson Schramm started it. It was actually Hayden Woods in that last inning. Greensboro snuck a pitching change in there. So Hayden Woods got that final strikeout and went three up, three down in that third inning. Wonder if we'll see. Hayden Woods again, or if it'll be another new pitcher for Greensboro in the fourth. We'll find out. It's Josh Jorman still out there for Lynchburg. He's cruising along. Gave up a leadoff single to Brody Gardner, but a clean sheet since then for Josh Jorman. 2-1 count right now on Louis Barini, the second baseman for Greensboro. Jorman has struck out five. There was a couple pop-ups to Gavin Collins. Gavin Collins fielded a ground ball and then a line drive by Brody Gardner to end the last inning to Avery Neves. Bobble from Ben Jones, goes to retrieve it, throws it away. Riley O'Donovan is there on the backup to pick that one up and the runner cannot advance. But it's E4 on Ben Jones, what looked to be a pretty benign ground ball in his direction. Couldn't come up with it cleanly. Nobody out for the Greensboro Pride. Kai Hayen, the right fielder, and three-hole man for Greensboro, steps into the box. The sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. This is where we started talking about the Florida swing and the recruiting that Greensboro must be doing in the Sunshine State. When this man, Hayen, came up, he popped out in foul territory to the third baseman, Gavin Collins, his first at bat. 1-0 count. Jorman seems to be falling behind a lot of hitters 1-0, but he, he, he does just that. You saw right there, he seems to come back and get a strike in there as well. Jorman seems to get two out of those first three or four pitches seem to be strikes. So, yes, you want to get ahead. You want that first pitch to be a strike. That's obviously a successful plan of attack for any pitcher. But there is something to be said for maybe pitching off the plate occasionally, try to get that hitter to chase something first pitch and then being able to come back over the plate if 
they don't either chase and or you miss on that first pitch because that happens sometimes too. Pitchers are human. They don't always hit their spot. But it's nice to have that plan of attack. It seems like Josh Jorman understands that. One-two count. Right on cue for Josh Jorman. Here's the hold. Barini is the runner at first. Small lead. Jorman went inside, rattled the cage a little bit from Hayen, but he dodges it, and it's a 2-2 count. Double play depth for Lynchburg, although Gavin Collins is back a little bit deeper than maybe you'd expect from a double play position for a third baseman. Same thing for the shortstop, Brandon Garcia. Full count now. See what Jorman comes with right here. Looked like he missed with a fastball upstairs. Pickoff move from Jorman. Good action over there to first base to keep an eye on Louis Barini. Reached via the error from the second baseman, Ben Jones. It's like a middle target from Riley O'Donovan. Jorman got it there. This ball is belted into left, and the yard will not hold it. Kai Hayen was able to just admire that one as it was going out. He got a lot of it into the trees in deep left field for a two-run home run. Greensboro on the board with the 2-0 lead as Josh Jorman surrendering the home run. That is the first homer Jorman has given up this season. Lynchburg's only given up 10 now as a team. That's 10 in 36 games, so it doesn't happen very often. And Josh Jorman and the entire defense actually seemed a little bit stunned when Hayen parked that one. 2-0 Greensboro. Hayen hit three homers last year and this season. Just checking for the number here from Kai Hayen. And I'm going to have to get back to it in a, in a second. Yeah, okay. That's his fourth home run of the season this year. So seven in the last two years for a sophomore, Kai Hayen. And, and a couple people in the box, in the press box, just commented here, didn't he really have that great sound? I mean, it didn't didn't have that blasting ping off the bat as it sailed out of here to left. But you could see the entire defense just kind of turn around and watch. Sam, or Kai Hayen was in the walk down to first base admiring it. Upstairs for ball three. I think it's a 3-1 count now on Connor Morehouse. And there's nobody out here in the top of the fourth. So a spot of bother for Lynchburg for sure. They do have some activity in their bullpen. Josh Jorman would surely prefer to get out of this inning himself, but still a lot of work to do, and he's walked Connor Morehouse. Might be time for one of those mound visits from either the catcher, Riley O'Donovan, or perhaps the associate head coach, Travis Beasley. It looks like Riley O'Donovan will do just that. He'll trot out to the mound here to have a word with Josh Jorman. I don't think Josh Jorman is easily rattled, but giving up a long home run and then walking the next hitter would definitely do it to just about anybody. It's a 2-0 Greensboro lead. That homer is just their second hit of the ball game. Lynchburg has two hits. Hornets have left two on. It was back-to-back -back doubles for Lynchburg in the bottom of the second from Riley O'Donovan and then Gavin Collins. But O'Donovan was thrown down at home. Eddie Gimble bounced into a 6-4-3 double play to end what was the best offensive opportunity of the afternoon so far for Lynchburg. More to come for sure. Josh Jorman trying to pitch his team back in the dugout so the Hornets can go swing the bats. Moses Lopez takes strike one. Good breaking ball there from Jorman. Nice confidence. And that's a good pitch left on left. That's a good pitch left on right-handed hitter too. But specifically against the tall Moses Lopez. Moses Lopez hitting 271 on the season. He's got a homer and four doubles, driven in 14. Connor Morehouse, one of the three seniors for Greensboro, taking his lead at first base. Ball one, and now it's a one-two count.
We're in the top of the fourth here at Fox Field. It's a, another great afternoon to play. I think the last time we were here last week, we had the temperatures in the upper 80s. It's upper 60s or 70 right now, but pretty nice out there. Some clouds. We've got a decent crowd. Yeah, the crowd is actually looking better than the first time I looked out there, which makes sense because not everybody arrives in pregame like we do. Uh, so more fans have made their way down the hill to watch the action. 2-2 two -two count as Jorman gets Lopez to foul another one off. Lynchburg's got a bunch of key options out of the bullpen. Only guys I would think that might be unavailable as Jorman goes upstairs to get Lopez swinging. Out number one. That's K number six in the game for Josh Jorman. Uh, only guys that might be unavailable would probably be Alex Giannascoli, who threw three innings yesterday, and also Baylor Cumby, who got the win pitching two innings yesterday against Hampton Sydney. Here comes associate head coach Travis Beasley for a mound visit. We'll catch our breath here for 30 seconds and let you know about this pitching change that Lynchburg is making in the top of the fourth inning. That's coming up next on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. At Lynchburg, we don't fear change. We embrace it in our students, on our campus, in our community, and around the world. We're building on our legacy of always moving forward. It's the same place with a new name. Welcome to the University of Lynchburg. Here comes one of those key options out of the bullpen. It's freshman Mason McDowell from Fishersville, Virginia. This will be appearance number 10 on the season for Mason McDowell. He's pitched four times in the month of April. He is a hard-throwing right-hander. Hitters are hitting just 152 against Mason McDowell. Lynchburg's got, I believe it's 10 pitchers where hitters are 250 or less against them. And then they've got uh, another crop of pitchers where hitters are hitting under 200, and Mason McDowell falls in that list right there. Yeah, batters hitting just 152 against Mason McDowell, and that is good for first on the team. Trevor Barnes is next at 167. Jack Batchmore, hitters batting just 181 against the Jack. So Lynchburg, pitching-wise this season, they have been outstanding. It's probably been not completely unnoticed by us, but we, we probably haven't given Lynchburg's team pitching quite enough credit. Lynchburg has four shutouts, including yesterday. They've got six games where they have not allowed an earned run. That'll make you feel good as a pitching staff. That might even be the number you look at more than just – rather just the true shutout. But Lynchburg obviously did both yesterday with an 11-0 victory on the road against Hampton Sydney, But team-wise, Lynchburg, we know about their great starting. We know about Jack Batchmore, but the rest of the staff has been outstanding as well. The ERA in April for the team is just over 2, 2.09. K per 9 as a team is 9.72. And if you look at a lot of the national statistics, Lynchburg ranking in the top 25 in a lot of them, those pitching stats. And I think the big one, ERA, Lynchburg right now fifth in the nation in ERA, first in the ODAC conference. So Mason McDowell strikes out first hitter he sees. That's K number seven as a team. Uh-oh, that ball swung on and ripped into center field from Hudson Powell. He went after the first offering from Mason McDowell, liked it, and got the barrel to it. That one probably startled Mason McDowell just a little bit coming off the bat back in his direction. Hit number three of the game for Greensboro, and they've got runners on first and second with two outs. Mason McDowell is on in relief of Josh Jorman. We'll try to figure out the math on Jorman's official line here 
in just a moment. But let's see if Lynchburg can get out of the inning without surrendering any more runs. Good sharp breaking ball there from Mason McDowell. That was kind of that sweeper breaking ball. It's the one a lot of people are talking about now. It's, it's probably just a slider, but I think when you call it a sweeper, it implies it's got a bit more horizontal break than vertical break. That one had a bit of both. That one really darted out of the zone. Another swing and miss for Mason McDowell. Cam Watts is the hitter, and he was bewildered by the first two deliveries from Mason McDowell. See if McDowell snaps off a third in a row or if it's time for the heater. Set and ready to go. It was another breaking ball in the dirt. Good block from Riley O'Donovan. But, yeah, that, that sweeper, just a breaking ball. Every, everything falls under the umbrella of the breaking ball, unless it's a fastball but or a changeup, I guess. But you, you got your curveballs and your sliders and your cutters and your sweepers and your slurves, and they're all slightly different. That was a fastball that was wide left. Riley O'Donovan kind of had to go into the – Hockey goalie save right there to keep that one off the backstop. 2-2 two -two count with two outs. Cam Watts, the third baseman, hitting for Greensboro. Runner on first and second. McDowell checks that runner at second, fires. Another off-speed pitch. I guess that's the other thing. It's all under the umbrella of an off-speed pitch. Change-ups would even fall under that, too. But Mason McDowell has... Good complement of things to go to. That fastball really got great life on it, especially for a freshman. You can see that right away. It just jumps out of his hand. It was the breaking ball again. Riley O'Donovan forced into the other batter's box again. I think he wanted that one a little bit closer. Get that breaking ball that starts in the hitting zone and then ends up as a ball. That's what you want. That one from McDowell started as a ball and ended up worse. Full count. Two outs, runners will be on the move early here. Big pitch from McDowell, swing and a miss, got him. Huge there for Lynchburg. They do surrender two on the two-run home run from Kai Hayen, but two runners left stranded for the pride. We'll see how Lynchburg can respond in their half of the fourth inning. The left-hander Hayden Woods still on for Greensboro, a sophomore, another Lando Lakes, Florida guy. Pitching for the Pride, due up for the Hornets. It'll be 3-4-5, Avery Neves, Eric Hyatt, Riley O'Donovan. To try to get the party started for Lynchburg, they have two hits. They've left two on, but offensively for Lynchburg, no real explosion just yet. This man could do it. He reached base today with the hit by pitch. Avery Neves hitting 336 on the season. He'll swing on the first one and drive it into left field. This is at least one with Neves' speed. Two is not going to be a problem. Yeah, left fielder picks it up and immediately throws into third base. It's a leadoff double for Avery Neves. Third double of the ball game for Lynchburg. Career now, that is double number 41 for Avery Neves in his career. 41 doubles. The University of Lynchburg record is 46 held by Stephen Scott. So Neves closing in on that. 
He's got enough time to do it. No guarantees that he will do it, and he needs five more to tie. But I, th I think you, you figure he's got enough time. Heck, Avery Neves could get two or three more doubles in this ball game. He's that kind of a player, and he leads off at second base now. Eric Hyatt, the first baseman, hitting for the Hornets. Eric Hyatt, a sophomore from Woodbridge, hitting 356 on the season. He was kind of in that playing every other game sort of situation, Eric Hyatt. But this is back-to-back -back starts. He was in the lineup yesterday for Lynchburg on the road at Hampton City, swinging a miss there. Now it's an 0-2 count on Eric Hyatt. Yeah, 41 doubles all time here at Lynchburg for Avery Neves. He's got 12 triples and 31 homers. So extra base hits galore for the All-American leading off at second base for Lynchburg. Yeah, he's scored the most runs in school history as well. Trying to score another one right here. Eric Hyatt will dump this one into right center. Avery Neves will come around to score. Hyatt's going to take second on the bobble. Nice base running there from Eric Hyatt. It was a well-hit ball to begin with. And I think off the bat, Eric Hyatt broke pretty hard. And there was a slight bobble in right field there. And Eric Hyatt took advantage of that. Yeah, here it is right there. Got behind the center fielder, Hudson Powell. Excellent replay there from our LHSN team. And that was just enough for Eric Hyatt. And that wasn't a situation where he had to restart. It wasn't like he shut it down at first and then saw the bobble and took off. He was running hard the entire way and took advantage of the slight miscue there in center field. O'Donovan will hack at the first one. So Avery Neves is around to score another run. He'll extend his career lead in that category. It's now 171. 171 times Avery Neves has touched home plate for Lynchburg. And Eric Hyatt gets the RBI to drive him in. 0-1 count on Riley O'Donovan. He's got a double already today. Looks like he wanted more than that on that hack. In the air to right. Hyatt will not tag, and it's out number one. Gavin Collins, one for one with a double. Into the batter's box for Lynchburg. Junior Gavin Collins from Clifton, Virginia. 134 career hits for Gavin Collins. Another guy you can spend as much time talking about the career numbers as you can just the, the season numbers or what he did yesterday. Collins did double yesterday. He had some great at-bats even before the double. Really challenged the right fielder with a ball that he hit hard in that opposite field gap. And then he hit one in the same gap for a double. I think the approach is pretty good for Gavin Collins. He's another one that the average probably doesn't reveal just how well he's been swinging the bat. He's had some 0 for days, but really I think an outstanding season for Gavin Collins. Seems to be getting better defensively as well. 1-0 count. Eric Hyatt takes this short lead at second base. Fastball upstairs from Hayden Woods. The sophomore is the second pitcher Greensboro has used today. In these midweek games, especially the non-conference games, you just sort of assume you're going to see a whole host of pitchers from both sides. Woods holds, fires, another ball. Not close. Now it's a 3-0 count for number 15, Gavin Collins. Lynchburg has used two pitchers. Wonder if we'll see Mason McDowell go back for a little bit more. Josh Jorman, three and one-third officially. He only surrendered two hits, and it's two earned runs. Both of those, one big swing of the back from Kai Hayen. Collins will lay off. That delivery at the knees, and now it's a 3-1 count. Josh Jorman, I think another one probably going to fall into that effective start category. I mean, just the one, one big fly, really the only damage done. But he exits trailing, so he would be in line for a loss if it got that far. I think the Lynchburg offense is going to have a lot to say about that. But that's how it stands at the moment. Full count as Gavin Collins lays off. That one that just nibbled the outer edge of the plate. One away here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Collins is ready. Woods is ready. 
Here's the pitch. Collins will foul that one away. On the season, Gavin Collins hitting 261, six doubles, now seven doubles, including the one he hit in this game. Seven doubles, three triples, two homers. We've seen Gavin Collins leave the yard here at Fox Field. Didn't get all of this. Could end up being a tough play. Center fielder called for it early. That's Hudson Powell that will come on and make the grab. Sophomore Logan Webster in to try to extend the inning here for Lynchburg. They've scored one. Avery Neves, leadoff double. Eric Hyatt drove him in. Hyatt stands on second base right now. Logan Webster, 267 on the season. One double, one homer. He's drove in 15. And he's a guy who has 11 walks and 11 strikeouts. And not quite in that that positive ratio with more walks than Ks, but pretty darn close. And that's a fun one to look at for Lynchburg statistically, how many hitters that they have that take more walks than they strike out. Not the only way to judge a hitter, but it's a, it's a really good way to look at a guy and you can sort of immediately tell the eye and the pitch selection. And then the bat control is a component in that as well. 0-2 count here on Logan Webster, trying to avoid his 12th strikeout of the season. Hayden Woods has the sign. He's ready. No setup yet from the catcher. Sliding inside now on Logan Webster. Pitch went away. Missed spot there from Woods, but the best Webster can do is flare it out of play over the Greensboro dugout. We're ready to try it again here, 0-2 count. With two outs, bottom four at Fox Field. You see Hyatt in your screen leading off for Lynchburg. Woods did get that one where he wanted it. Inner half, maybe even inner third there, but Logan Webster off the knuckles and another foul ball. Remember to check out all the social media destinations, fans, if you're into that sort of thing. Lynchburg's got some great stuff going on, including the skills challenge, the baseball skills challenge. That video is out, fans. If you haven't seen that, we'll, we'll recap it a bit for you here as the afternoon goes on. Another 0-2 pitch. This one low and away. Logan Webster takes it for ball one. Yeah, those Lynchburg skills challenges have been pretty cool. And baseball finally got theirs going, and it was – Cameron Lane that won the skills challenge, and he has advanced. He beat Bryce Demery, who uh, I thought just great personality from those two guys. It's a fun video. One, two, pitch here. Webster, he rips this one in the left center gap. This is going to be a tough play. It's down. Hyatt will come in. The ball game is tied. Webster wants more. He's going to go to third. Relay throw. Head first slide. Webster's in. Ball kicks free off the Lynchburg dugout. It'll stay in play. But Logan Webster with some wheels around second base. I thought he was going to get the stop sign. He may have blown right through the stop sign. I'm not sure. But Logan Webster, big barrel on that one to the James C. Fox Field lettering out there in left center. Here comes the relay. One bounce to the shortstop. Throw short hopped into the bag there. Cam Watts couldn't handle it. I'm not sure that they would have gotten Logan Webster even if the throw was perfect. He was rolling. So Lynchburg has tied the game. That is hit number five total for the Hornets, and it's been four extra base hits. That's been a talking point all season long. Lynchburg will single you to death, but today they've got three doubles and now a triple. Coach Lucas Jones called it death by a thousand cuts. The way this Lynchburg offense will just scatter balls around the yard and get 90 feet at a time with those singles. But today, it's been some balls to the fence, a few down the line for doubles. Eddie Gimble, 0 for 1, hit into that double play in the second inning. How about Logan Webster? The wheels as he was coming around there. Serious speed from the sophomore. That was fun to watch. It was just a red streak. You couldn't even keep your eyes on it as Logan Webster 
was coming around second. 2-1 count here on Eddie Gimble. Got a tie ball game now. Lynchburg has scored two. They seem to do this. That's been another theme and talking point for us all season long, baseball fans. Lynchburg seems to answer when the other team scores. Not at a 100% rate, but pretty darn close to it. You score runs, and Lynchburg's offense seems to come back and score some of their own. Gimbel swings on this one. It's in the right center gap. Now the right fielder under it pretty comfortably for out number three. But Lynchburg has scored 2-2 ball game. How about the triple from Logan Webster? Avery Neves had a double to lead off the inning, and the Hornets back in business. Tie ball game through four. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. Lynchburg ties the game up, knotted at two after four complete. Mason McDowell going to stay on to begin inning number five for Lynchburg. That's Eric Hyatt with the RBI single to drive in Avery Neves. He turned that into a double there on the bobble from the center fielder. There's Neves coming around. Really good stuff offensively from Lynchburg. They are so... So resourceful, and when I say resourceful, I mean they can beat you in so many ways offensively. They'll take the walks. We've touched on that already. Very patient at the plate. They'll take the walks. They'll take the hit by pitch. Lynchburg getting hit uh, at just under two times per game this season. They're not afraid to do that. They can use all fields and hit the singles everywhere. They can use the speed. They can steal bases. And then they can pump some balls in the gap and down the line, hit some balls over the fence and use the power game. So a lot of different options for Lynchburg. Fly ball to left will be out number one. Gavin Fleming down after a short trip to the batter's box for his second plate appearance. And here comes Brody Gardner, one for two. Single to start the game. And then a hard rip to Avery Neves in left field in his second at bat. But Lynchburg's offense, I, ju I just think it's really impressive to watch what they do. They've had multiple guys that have gone on these hot streaks. They've, they've gotten on these tears where they just don't seem to get out. But when one guy starts to cool off, it seems like another picks it up and starts a hot streak of their own. Carson Atkins was one of those guys for a while. Avery Neves, he's been hot pretty much his entire career, but he's had some stretches where he's really caught fire. Jackson Harding, one of the latest ones to go on a hot streak. There's another line drive from Gardner. Boy, he's hitting it well. Unfortunately, right at the second baseman, Ben Jones. Gardner's got a single, a line drive out to left field, and then a one-hop line drive out to the second baseman. Baseball in a nutshell right there, fans. Brody Gardner, one for three, but he's hit it on the nose three times. And then your buddy will get two or three bloop singles, and all of a sudden in his stat sheet, it looks like he had the better day. But back to Lynchburg's offense. Yeah, Jackson Harding, he's gone on a tear. Ben Jones, a player of the week. Obviously, that means he's done some things in the last week. Brandon Garcia, the freshman, outstanding all season long, up and down the lineup. And it's a different lineup for Lynchburg every time. We've mentioned they've, they've duplicated two lineups, but for the most part, it's something different every time for Lynchburg. And it's pretty cool. I think it keeps guys on their toes, and it, and it keeps more guys in that rhythm. More guys have a chance to heat up. If you use the same nine every game, well, those guys that aren't getting the regular at-bats, seeing the live pitching, they're not really going to develop or have a chance to get hot for you. Strike one, 3-1 three, one count with two outs here on Louis Barini. Lynchburg now has won six ODAC Player of the Week awards. Some pitchers in there, too. Here's the cool thing about Lynchburg is it'll be ball four for Barini. 
back to Lynchburg and how you never know who's going to beat you or who the, who's going to do the damage. Six different players have won those six team awards. Wes Arrington, Carson Atkins, Avery Neves, Zach Potts, Jack Batchmore, and Ben Jones. Batch and Ben Jones are the two recent winners. Pitcher of the week, player of the week there for Lynchburg. So they've got six awards this season. Riley O'Donovan's going to go chat to Mason McDowell again, who's fallen behind 1-0. Smart there from Riley O'Donovan. And, of course, some of that could be coming from the dugout as well. But I always love to compliment those Lynchburg catchers, Holden Fiedler, Sean Pokerock, and Riley O'Donovan. They really seem to have a great feel for the game, know when it's time to go visit a pitcher, know what to say, how to say it. It's been pretty fun to watch. And it's a real treat for Lynchburg to be able to have three catchers of catchers, excuse me, three catchers of this caliber. You don't have to wear one guy down. It's a long, grueling season. Hard for a catcher to do both games of the doubleheader. Not impossible, but difficult. So Lynchburg to be able to spread that workload out amongst three guys, and three guys that can really swing it too, with Fiedler, Pokerock, and O'Donovan. That's also a nice issue to have. Looked like another breaking ball in for Mason McDowell. Mound visit seems to have paid off, seems to be working. One, two count coming up, two outs. Runner on first, McDowell's ready to go, the right-hander. Fire, strike three, hit the target again. Direct hit that time with the breaking ball. Hayen couldn't do anything but watch. One runner on for Greensboro, but he's left stranded, and we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Great moments are born from great opportunity. That's what you have here tonight. That's what you've earned here tonight. This is your time. Now go out there and take it. Third pitcher of the game for Lynchburg will be Tyler Lamar, a sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina. He'll get in there to face this Hornets offense that seems to be heating up just a little bit. Tyler Lamar, this is appearance number four. He's pitched just over two innings, struck out two, walked three. Not a big body of work to go on. And that can, can make a guy a little bit tougher, really, fans, because you might just look – at the numbers there as he's coming in, the Lynchburg coaching staff. You might see the inflated, elevated ERA, and, and you say, oh, he's only pitched three innings. We don't have anything to worry about, but you don't have much to go on. You don't have a real big file or a big book to look at as far as a scouting report. you got to try to figure him out pretty quick. It looks like Lamar's got good action from the left side there with sort of an over-the-top delivery. He'll be facing 9-1-2 due up for Lynchburg. Carson Atkins, Brandon Garcia, and Ben Jones. No hits between those three guys, so I'm sure they will be looking to change that. Good stuff from Mason McDowell. He gets his third strikeout of the game to end the top of the fifth. Greensboro has struck out nine times as a team. So Lynchburg, their K per nine as a team is over nine. And they're already at that mark right now in this ball game. So that bodes well for that Lynchburg pitching staff, which as a staff, I, I, I just think so underrated. Last 11 Lynchburg as a team is 2.27 earned run average. There's four shutouts in Lynchburg's last 11. Yesterday, Lynchburg struck out eight Tiger batters 
They walked five and gave up six hits to Hampton Sydney. Carson Atkins will take a hit by pitch. That's the third one of the game for Lynchburg. And that continues to be a part of their offensive arsenal. And not all those hit by pitch are created equal. There's, there's some where it's just a gift. You, you, don't, you can't do anything but let it hit you. You can't get out of the way. And other times there's some, some craft and some skill in staying in there on a, on a breaking ball or a pitch that's just kind of coming inside. Maybe you could get out of the way, but you just decide to let it hit you. Brandon Garcia, 0 for 2. Batting with a runner at first. That's Carson Atkins. That one just missed for the new pitcher, Tyler Lamar. Brandon Garcia's got the 18 game hitting streak. He's 0 for 2 on the day, though. See if he can get that going. Got a chat with Brandon Garcia's father after a game. Such a nice guy, really cool family. And a baseball, baseball family for sure. They are baseball nuts. Brandon Garcia, no relation to assistant coaches Oscar and Gabe Garcia. Good read from Carson Atkins. That one kicks away from the catcher. Atkins will scamper into second. But Brandon Garcia and Ben Jones, the Batman and Robin combo, high school teammates, they have both been in the starting lineup quite a bit for Lynchburg this season and a big reason for the Hornets' success. I don't think we're overstating their value when we say that. The Caped Crusaders. Garcia trying to keep this hitting streak alive here and maybe drive in what would be the go-ahead run. We're tied up right now, 2-2 ball game in the fifth inning. Yeah, it will be a single through the hole. Hit streak up to 19. Atkins going to wheel around third. He is in safely. Good throw from right field there. Hayen got to that one quickly and uncorked it to home. Greensboro's already thrown out one at the plate, but not this time as it's an RBI single for Brandon Garcia. So the hit streak up to 19 now, 19 in a row for the freshman Brandon Garcia. He is a freshman. His numbers would be outstanding for a senior, a grad student. But Brandon Garcia is a freshman. Just kind of blows your mind. Here comes another freshman, Ben Jones. Ooh, hitting the head. It'll be a hit by pitch. Fourth batter that Greensboro has hit today. And the second of the inning. Don't know if, yeah, it didn't make a, a lot of contact. Although sometimes you'll see the athletic trainer just stroll down there and have a quick word with Ben Jones just to make sure he's okay. We'll get a pitching change at the moment, so maybe that will end up happening at some point. But Lynchburg, they're in business again. Runners on first and second with nobody out. They've already taken the lead in the bottom of the fifth inning. And now it's going to be a pitching change for Greensboro. Fourth arm will come in to work for the pride. We'll pause for a moment and bring it back in just a second. It'll be Avery Neves due up for the Lynchburg Hornets next. Dylan Ward is on for Greensboro, appearance number 15. So we've seen some pitchers for the Pride that didn't have a lot of statistical numbers to go on. Dylan Ward is not in that category. This is appearance number 15 out of the bullpen for Dylan Ward. And he last pitched on Monday, 
He's got one save on the season. Lynchburg's interesting. They've got six saves spread out among six different players. That's a, a little statistical oddity there. But maybe it says something about Chris Fennessy, the head coach for Greensboro. And he'll go to different players in different situations, trying some different ways to close down games. Six saves really as a team isn't a bad number in college baseball. That implies you're going to be winning some close games. Lynchburg's won a bunch of close games this season. Hold that thought as Avery Neves is hacking at the first delivery from Dylan Ward. The last pitcher, Tyler Lamar, you might not have a big scouting report. With a guy like Dylan Ward that's pitched in 14 games up to this point, you probably do have some data on him. And this is the second time that Lynchburg and Greensboro have played. Lynchburg got the first one on the road in G Burrow. 13-3, that game ended after eight because of the run rule. But with Dylan Ward, you probably got some more data to go on in a scouting report before you even have to see him get on the mound. Garcia bouncing around, he'll take off. Jones broke late, throw to second, got him. Pretty good baseball there from Miles Vacheron, the catcher from Greensboro. Brandon Garcia got an excellent jump, stealing third. Ben Jones had to wait until he saw Brandon Garcia was going. He broke late, and that is a really good way to get out, get it out there. Throw out the trail guy at second base, in this case, Ben Jones. So it's a stolen base for Brandon Garcia, but a caught stealing on Ben Jones. Garcia is now 90 feet away. Ball two. Avery Neves watches that one spike into the ground in front of home plate. Miles Vacheron, the catcher for Greensboro. Great throw, on target throw as well. Good job to be there covering on that trail runner. N Neves is out in front of that one from Dylan Ward. It's a 2 2 count with one out. Lynchburg has pulled ahead, 3 2 lead. Hornets were scoreless in the first three. Scored two to tie it up in the bottom of the fourth. That matched the two that Greensboro scored. And now Lynchburg has jumped in front. 2-2 two -two to Neves. Waited on that one a bit longer, and it's fouled away. Another breaking ball, which is really all that Avery Neves sees. Uh, we were watching the game against Hampton Sydney yesterday, and I, I bet Avery Neves saw a total of two fastballs, max. It's all off-speed stuff to Avery Neves, and it's typically out of the zone. Ward will come after Neves. I think it was off speed again, and he fouls it away. But, yeah, very, very rarely Avery Neves is going to get challenged with a fastball. Sometimes teams will throw the fastball up or off the plate and then come back with the breaking ball. That, that's a good plan of attack against a good hitter. You want to give him different speeds, but you don't want to give him a fastball. That one might have been a fastball that tailed in, and Neves couldn't swat away. So it's a strikeout. And that's what will happen after you show a guy five, six, seven, eight off-speed pitches in a row. All of a sudden, that fastball, which might only be in the low to mid-80s, it seems really hard when you haven't seen one in a while. So that's the value in changing speeds, changing locations. And it's really the only way to get a great hitter out is to, is to give them different looks, change it up on them as often as you can. 0-1 count, Eric Hyatt takes that. He's one for two with an RBI. He drove in Avery Neves in that fourth inning where Lynchburg tied it up. Hornets on top right now, 3-2. to two. Brandon Garcia's got an RBI single in this inning, and he's standing at third base. Hyatt got that short, compact stroke there and fouls that one away. That's a, that's a trend for Lynchburg hitters. You don't see a lot of big leg lifts, big leg kicks, huge moves at the ball. They're all pretty short to it. Some guys a little bigger move than others, but mechanically, all pretty simple, pretty effective, too. See if Hyatt can stay alive. 0-2. Breaking ball in there. Steep one. 12-6. Hammer for strike three. So Lynchburg leaves one stranded. They get one hit, and they score one to take the lead. 3-2. Hornets back on top here at Fox Field. Every great college has a great city. 
For Lynchburg, we are near urban areas with lots of restaurants, shopping, and events. Plus, we are one of the top schools in the area. Come see for yourself. Logan Tapman is on for Lynchburg, third pitcher of the game. Hornets lead 3-2. Mason McDowell would be in line for the win if the result stays like this. But it's Logan Tapman, the freshman from Berlin, Maryland, on for his 11th appearance of the season. He's 2-0 on the year, 3.72 earned run average, one of those great young options out of the bullpen. A freshman, Mason McDowell, also a freshman, by the way. And that's so cool with Lynchburg. They went to two seniors out of the pen yesterday, Baylor Cumbie and Alex Giannascoli. And now it's been two freshmen, the first two options out of the bullpen for Lynchburg. Future is bright for sure. And just another, another in a long line of dependable pitchers. It's really developed for Lynchburg. 14 strikeouts to just eight walks for Logan Tapman, Those numbers outstanding for the Hornets as a team. Uh, the K to walk ratio for Lynchburg as a team is 2.72. So that means they strike out 2.72 batters for every one that they walk. And they are first in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference in that stat. Lynchburg walks just 3.26 batters per game. Just 3.26 per game. And Lynchburg has walked two today. They've struck out nine. Logan Tapman is on his way here. Nice off-speed delivery on Connor Morehouse. Connor Morehouse is 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout. So he's done both. Comes the pitch from Tapman. He's got that nice high leg kick. We were talking about Lynchburg hitters mechanically. We look at Lynchburg pitchers mechanically, and they are really sound. Coaching staff so good with that. Associate head coach Travis Beasley. Also, Michael Solbach deserves a lot more credit than we give him. And, and Coach Beasley said, you got to give. Oh, what a grab from Gavin Collins. Hot shot over there to third. But Collins up to the task to snare that one out of the sky. That was a laser from Connor Morehouse. Greensboro, to their credit, they've hit the ball hard right at some Lynchburg defenders. One to Avery Neves. One of the second baseman, last inning. Brody Gardner hit, hit those two. And then this one, Connor Morehouse, a laser that he squared up. But Gavin Collins, right place, right time. Moses Lopez is swinging early. He seems to have done that every at bat. He likes to hack. Tapman's got an 0-1 count. But yeah, back to the coaching staff. Coach Beasley, you know, he said the last time I saw him, you really got to give Coach Solbach a little bit more credit. He is, uh, he is an underrated guy, an underrated part of this Lynchburg team. Coach Solbach uh, played professional baseball for eight or nine years in the minors. Great college career, too. And it really seems to understand how to work with these Lynchburg pitchers. They also, and Coach Lucas Jones seconded this, he, he said if, if Solbach's got an idea, you probably need to go with it. He's kind of in that uh, – Man of, of few words, but it's pretty profound when he says something. When, when Solbach's got an idea, more often than not, he's right. So it was pretty cool to, to hear more about Coach Solbach and 
And you talk to the Lynchburg legend Grayson Thurman, who's playing minor league baseball right now. He says the same thing. He says he learns, learns so much from Coach Solbach. But, yeah, Grayson Thurman, four appearances in single-A baseball in the Toronto Blue Jays organization. And uh, didn't pitch yesterday, so who knows. Could be, could be on the mound again tonight out of the bullpen. Here's a pitch from Logan Tapman, who's on the mound right now. Another great stop from Riley O'Donovan. Smothered that, kept it in front, throws a strike down to first base to complete the punch out. 10 Ks for Lynchburg pitching staff, spread amongst three pitchers. They're doing it again. Hornets pitching has been phenomenal all season and seem to be continuing that trend right now. Not going to get a shutout like they did yesterday. Two-run homer from Hayen, but it's been pretty outstanding other than that so far for Lynchburg. Long way to go in this one. I say long way to go. We're in the top of the sixth. Miles Vacheron, the catcher who has struck out twice, dealing with an 0-1 count now on Logan Tapman. See that good sinking, tailing, two-seam fastball from Tapman? That seems to be a trait shared by a lot of Lynchburg pitchers. Good action on the two-seamer. Probably, probably could be better served to call it a sinker, the way it moves back to the arm side. That one moved so much it nearly hit Vacheron. But the four-seam fastball tends to be a bit straighter, a little bit harder usually. And then the two-seam fastball, a bit more of that running, tailing, sinking action. Pretty much going to move to the to the arm side. So if you're a right-handed pitcher, it should move to the right, into the right-handed hitter's body. If it goes the other way, then it kind of becomes a cutter. 2-2 two -two count. Logan Tapman out of the windup. Dealing, mm, just missed low. Good spot right there, but the count is full. And a good take there from Miles Vacheron. Catcher maybe a little... And knowing the zone there, helping out defensively, know what the umpire is going to call, maybe. Good take from Vacheron. Full count. O'Donovan getting set. Signs are in there. Here comes the delivery from Tapman. Breaking ball. Got Vacheron under it. Casual grab coming on for Carson Atkins. He's got it for the third out. It's three up, three down in the top of the sixth for Greensboro. The Hornets lead three to two on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. To them, the whole world looks like an opportunity, one to be seized, built upon, and made better for their sport and the people around it. To student athletes, every opportunity is a chance to change what could be and show the world what opportunity can do. Football has taught me a lot throughout my life. It's definitely had a huge imprint on who I am as a person. Competing at a Division III level created that opportunity for me to go to college. Not only was I the first one in my family to graduate college, but I was really the first one to even go. Being the first one, I'm breaking that cycle, and, and now that I've graduated, I'm not sure what's the next step, but I know I have a lot of doors open. And a lot of those are open because I played football and ran track here at Otterbein. It's still Dylan Ward for the Greensboro Pride. They trail by one, but very much a ball game here in the bottom of the sixth at Fox Field. Hornets trying to remain undefeated at home. 17-0 up to this point. Lynchburg 38-2 at home in the last two seasons. This is game two between these two ball clubs. Lynchburg won 13-3 earlier in the season. Greensboro used 10 pitchers in that first ball game, so they're, they're ahead of that curve a little bit. Lynchburg, they're pitching well. They've given up three hits, stranded four Greensboro runners. Only runs scored for Greensboro off that two-run homer in the fourth inning. Riley O'Donovan, he's got a double, and he flew out to right field. At bat number three for the catcher today. There's that 12-6 breaking ball in for a strike from Dylan Ward. Pretty impressive.
Ward used that to strike out Eric Hyatt in the last at bat of the fifth inning. It's actually back-to-back -back K's to end that fifth inning there. And two pretty good ones to get if you're Dylan Ward, Avery Neves, and Eric Hyatt. 0-2 count now on Riley O'Donovan. Going to have to work a bit here. O'Donovan will foul that one away. I think those short, compact swings for Lynchburg, a big reason why they don't strike out a ton, why they do put the ball in play a little bit more than your average team. It's not that they can't hit for power. They certainly can. We've seen that already in this game. Six hits, four of them extra base hits. Ooh, O'Donovan's going to take the hit by pitch. Does that look to be one of those two-seam fastballs that just got away from Dylan Ward? And so we get to see that piece again of Lynchburg's offense. Hit by pitch number five. Here comes a pinch runner on for Riley O'Donovan. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Ethan Smith will run. Ethan Smith, number three, in off the bench for Lynchburg. Did we see Ethan Smith run yesterday? I think we did. Yes, he did appear as a pinch runner in that win against Hampton Sydney. So Ethan Smith is on first. Gavin Collins is hitting. That means we'll see a new catcher. Ethan Smith is, is not going to stay in to catch for Lynchburg. If I'm wrong, then I'll just end up being wrong. But I think we're either going to see Holden Fiedler or Sean Pokorock in to catch for Lynchburg. So an offensive chess piece kind of a move there for Lucas Jones. Riley O'Donovan gets his three at-bats, three plate appearances, I guess, two at-bats, as the hit-by-pitch won't go against Riley O'Donovan. And you get Ethan Smith in for some speed, and then we'll get a new battery mate for whatever pitcher goes out there for Lynchburg. They've still got more <laughs> options. Gavin Collins, 1-1 one, one count for number 15. From Clifton, Virginia, Gavin Collins is one for two with a double. Flew out to center in his previous at bat. Dylan Ward will toss over to first base to keep an eye on Ethan Smith. And Ethan Smith is another one of those un unsung hero kind of a guys for Lynchburg. Knows the role, understands the role. He's a sophomore infielder from Midlothian. Gavin Collins will put a charge into this one. But the right fielder able to make the grab for out number one. Ethan Smith, sophomore infielder from Midlothian. And that's not an easy thing to do to be that guy that comes on to pinch run because, sure, you'd like to be playing more. You'd like to be one of those everyday guys. But the good teams have the players that understand their role. They embrace their role. They're ready for their role. And that means, you know, understanding middle, late part of the game, hey, I should probably have the legs loose. If a guy like a Riley O'Donovan gets on, might be my turn to go in there and run and, and, and hopefully make a big play, hopefully be ready for that moment. It's kind of like those pitchers that might only get one batter, a situational pitcher where you might just be in for, for a matchup situation with a hitter. you got to embrace that. It's not easy to have that short little small sample size, but you got to be ready for it and be ready when the moment happens. I think Ethan Smith is one of those guys. Lynchburg has a whole roster full of those guys. 0-2 oh, count on Logan Webster. Webster hasn't been an everyday player for Lynchburg, but he seems to embrace the chances that he does get. Sophomore's got 24 hits on the season. Now 25 after that triple in his last at bat. Yeah, Logan Webster pumped one into that left center gap, and he was rolling around the bases. This one flared foul. Moses Lopez, the first baseman for Greensboro, gave good chase after that one. Couldn't get there. Yeah, Logan Webster, 267 on the season. One double, one triple, one homer, a little bit of everything. He's been hit five times. Going back to that part of Lynchburg's game. 0-2 count on the sophomore, Logan Webster. Dylan Ward taking a while to get that sign in. And he'll throw over to first again. Ball caromed around. It got by the first baseman and then bounced hard off the fence down the right field foul line. 
but came back in play to where the second baseman, Louis Barini, and the first baseman, Moses Lopez, were able to get to it before Smith could advance. So the speedster Smith off the bench is getting some activity as Ward is thrown over there quite a bit to keep some tabs on him. 0-2 count on Logan Webster with one out. Ground ball up the middle. This could be two. Easy one there and the throw down to first. Webster thought he beat it. Umpire disagrees, and it's a double play to end the inning. Second time Lynchburg has grounded into a double play. Webster using the wheels again, but pretty good job there by the shortstop. Gavin Fleming took the first one himself with the right foot and then used the right arm to get the second one. Lynchburg does not score in the sixth. They lead 3-2 after six complete at Fox Field. Lynchburg leads 3-2 after six complete at Fox Field. Greensboro will send up 7-8-9 to face Logan Tapman, who stays out for the Hornets. Lynchburg has been really impressive on the mound all season, but today they're doing it again with three pitchers so far. Josh Jorman started it, Mason McDowell came in, and now it's Logan Tapman. And this is a Greensboro team that's been swinging it lately hitting over 381 as a team in their last five. They're averaging 9.8 runs in their last five. And double digit hits in seven of the last 11 for Greensboro. Lynchburg has made the pride offense look pretty average so far. Just three hits in the game for Greensboro. They've struck out 10 times. It was three up, three down last inning for the pride. And to find their last hit, you got to go back to the fourth inning. So there's ball one from Logan Tapman. Got a great little statistical oddity about Zach Potts this Sunday at Shenandoah fans. And this one, uh, actually, Zach Potts' father alerted us to. A, a wild one to think about. I mean, I got to find it for you here, which I will do in just a moment. We really need a pitcher like Logan Tapman to to field a ball or cover first base. That would be a nice tie in. And here you go, right off the bat. Tapman off the mound, throws to first, and they will record the out there. 1-3 on the put out. So a perfect transition. I did not know that was going to happen, but a perfect transition to this stat from Sunday about Zach Potts. Trying to find it for you here. I got I to gotta bring it up. Out of, on my phone. That's the drawback to having the info on your phone as, as opposed to having the, uh, the written notes. It's harder to get to. But yeah, Zach Potts in the game against Shenandoah, the extra innings win. Zach Potts had seven putouts on the mound. Seven putouts. He had four assists. So if you don't know fans, Logan Tapman just got the assist right there. One, three, and the putout is recorded by the first baseman, Eric Hyatt. But Zach on Sunday had seven putouts, which means he was over there covering first base a bunch. Uh, I think there was a, a line drive in there, a bunt. There was there was some bunts that got popped up also. And then four assists for Zach Potts. He struck out three. So that was 14 of 20 outs that he was out there for that Zach Potts contributed to in some way. 14 of 20, 70%. And that seems astronomically high, doesn't it, fans? It's like he, he could have just played the game by himself, Zach Potts, with the, with the defense that he was doing. That is the epitome of fielding your position. 
And uh, Zach Potts' father was able to, to look up the major league records because, you know, we got all those box scores going back to the 1880s or whatever. Watch out. Line drive right here from Gavin Fleming. Gavin Fleming will smoke one through the hole, and just like that, Greensboro has uh, not quite doubled their hit total, but they went from three to five pretty quickly. And there's runners at first and second as the threat is real here for Greensboro with the leadoff man, Brody Gardner. But just finishing the thought there, it, it looks like the highest in a major league game was Greg Maddox with seven putouts in a, in, in a big league game. But uh, we're, we're researching. The LHSN research team is trying to figure out what – if and what there is a college record for a pitcher as far as putouts in a game. Holden Fiedler is going to go chat with Logan Tapman right on cue. We thought this would probably happen. Back-to-back -back singles for Greensboro as we'll transition the conversation back to this game. The pride is very much in business here with the hot-hitting Brody Gardner. He's hit three of them hard. He's only got one hit to show for himself, but a line drive right at Avery Neves and left. A one-hopper ripped off the bat to second base for Brody Gardner. So the spray chart looking pretty good and hard to figure out as well for Gardner. He's hitting it everywhere. Enters the game hitting 298. 11 doubles, three triples. No homers for Brody Gardner. So he's got some power in there. Now associate head coach Travis Beasley is going to join the conversation. Let's see if he gets the ball from Logan Tapman or not. Not yet, anyway. And we'll remind you, fans, that Lynchburg is in action. Doubleheader scheduled for Saturday. Subscribe to the email updates that you can get. Go to lynchburgsports.com. And you get the social media stops as well to stay up to date on the schedule. But right now, Lynchburg is scheduled to play Guilford in a doubleheader Saturday. It actually looks like that's going to be the best weather of the week, and then North Carolina Wesleyan in the final home game of the season next week. So Logan Tapman is done. Lynchburg's got a lot of cards they can play out of the bullpen, but they're going to play the Jack. It's Jack Batchmore in to try to close it down. Jack Batchmore did not pitch yesterday in the game against Hampton Sydney. So for a guy that is always available, Jack Batchmore, we feel like we felt like he would fall into the very available category. He likes to pitch a lot, likes to stay regular. Did throw in the win Sunday against Shenandoah. And that brought Jack Batchmore's season record up to 5-0 with seven saves. The Jack has been pretty lights out all year long. 1.10 earned run average. Batter is hitting just a measly 181 against Jack Batchmore. He's only given up four extra base hits on the season. And the K to walk ratio is pretty nuts as well for Jack Batchmore. 64 strikeouts to just 13 free passes. Jack Batchmore has been lights out incredible for Lynchburg this year. And he is on to try to preserve a one-run lead. And that shows you what Lynchburg thinks about this game. In addition to just wanting to get Jack Batchmore some work, having him stay regular, that shows what Lynchburg thinks about this win. This is not an afterthought kind of a game here for Lynchburg. They know that every game would matter in possibly an at-large bid situation if you don't win the Old Dominion Athletic Conference Tournament. Remember, the tournament winner gets the automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. But Lynchburg could be in line for an at-large bid like they got last season. But you got to win all those non-conference games. You don't have to win all the non-conference games, fans, but it helps. And it helps to hold serve at home, which is what Lynchburg has done this season. There is one out here in the top of the seventh. It would be a save situation for Batchmore if he finishes the game. And there are runners on first and second. Back-to-back -back singles for Gavin Fleming, Brody Gardner, Dangerous hitter up for Greensboro. It's a 3-2 Lynchburg lead. Jack Batchmore on looking for what would be save number eight. Again, if he finishes the game, we'll tie up some of those statistical loose ends a little bit later. There's so many of them in baseball, you could just never stop talking about the stats. I think sometimes we overdo that a little bit. 
That's a self-criticism there. Self-critique, maybe, rather than criticism. There's a difference. 0-2 count here as Batchmore switched on early and ready to go. Gardner maybe trying to get a look at the offerings from Jack Batchmore. And Big Jack doesn't give you a whole lot of time to get comfortable. One gone here in the top of the seventh. Batchmore holds, checks the runner at second. This one will bounce away from Holden Fiedler, who is in there defensively for Lynchburg. Riley O'Donovan started as the catcher. O'Donovan reached base twice, a double and a hit by pitch. Came out for the pinch runner, Ethan Smith, in the last inning. And now it's Holden Fiedler catching. Fiedler caught all nine yesterday for Lynchburg in the 11-0 win over the Tigers from Hampton City. Runners do move up. Second and third now. K for Batchmore. Fiedler going to try to run down Gardner. Gardner kind of gave up on the uh, attack to first base there as Fiedler will toss it. And a good job to rotate in and cover home by Jack Batchmore. And he saw that Fiedler was going to have to vacate his spot. So good team beat baseball there for Lynchburg. They do get the strikeout. K number 11 of the game for Lynchburg's pitching staff. And I think it's strikeout number 69 of the season now for Jack Batchmore. He'd be going for number 70. Good start, but that one missed just slightly high. 1-0 the count on Louis Barini, the second baseman for Greensboro. 0 for 2 with a walk. Reached on an error, so he's actually been on twice. That time it's a strike from Batchmore. 1-1 one, one count. Infield regular depth. Outfield pretty much straight away. Maybe slightly shallow. Big hack from Barini. But nothing but air. 1-2 count. See how nasty Jack Batchmore wants to get to try to end the inning and leave a couple stranded in scoring position. Fiedler's going to make sure he stays in front of this one. Looked like it was a breaking ball. Good block from Fiedler there. 2-2 two -two count. Nice take from Barini. Lay off that one. That's not easy to do. Most guys can't do it against Jack Batchmore. Barini did not pull the trigger. Does swing on this one. Foul ball. Look like it might stay in briefly, but not anywhere close as Holden Fiedler didn't even give chase. We'll try it again here. Deuces wild on number three. Louis Barini. Here's the pitch from Batchmore. Ball up the middle. Batch actually got his bare hand on it, deflected it. Atkins will come on. Throws to home, bypasses the cut man. That's going to let Barini go into second base. One run comes in. It is the tying run. Louis Barini with the RBI single. Batch almost with the cricket style catch there with the bare hand. They don't use a glove in cricket. And Batch actually got the paw onto that, couldn't pull it in, and didn't really slow it down enough for the middle guys to get to it either. Brandon Garcia, the shortstop, and Ben Jones, they were headed in that direction, but it was through the infield before they even got close to it. First pitch swing, and Collins will come on, get a high hop, throws across, and gets the out. So we are tied at three as Greensboro gets a run across in the top of the seventh. We'll see if the Hornets can answer in their half of the seventh. Private education is too expensive? Think again. At the University of Lynchburg, you can get a personalized education for the cost of a state school. If you're commuting and you get our top scholarships, you could pay much less. And you get all that without the hassle of giant lecture halls. Our faculty know your name here and do more than just teach. You might even do research together and plan out your next career moves.
It's a freshman, greatest, Grayson Curtis on for Greensboro College. Grayson Curtis, number 38. This will be appearance number five. It's just over three innings of work for Grayson Curtis. Greensboro played Friday and Monday. They took the weekend off. I think that was weather adjusted because of some of that rain that we had. So the bullpen obviously got some work in those games. Doubleheader Friday for Greensboro and then one game on Monday. They did win all those. It's a four-game winning streak right now for Greensboro. For Lynchburg, just one win in a row. They lost game two of the doubleheader against Shenandoah on Sunday. But Lynchburg has won 10 of their last 11. They've won 17 of their last 19. Lynchburg is 30 and five on the season total. Undefeated, 17 and 0 at Fox. But they are getting tested here today in this midweek non-conference game against the Greensboro Pride. Grayson Curtis is on. He'll face a pinch hitter. It's Cam Lane. Eddie Gimble started. First start of the season for Eddie Gimble. 0 for 2. And a veteran, Cam Lane, the winner of the Lynchburg Hornets Baseball Skills Challenge. He gets to advance on to the final eight. And that skills challenge is going to be pretty cool. As Cam Lane nearly got hit again. He's done that a lot in his career. If he gets hit, we'll tell you the number. But uh, the skills the skills challenge finals are, are coming up. So that's a reason to get in on the social media side of things. You can watch Cam Lane and Bryce Demery do battle in a game of fungo golf around the Fox Field diamond. I guess I've given away the ending. Cam Lane does win that. It's still worth watching, though. These guys had a lot of fun. Great personalities, both of them. And there's plenty of banter coming from everybody off camera as well. So it's just a great time. Those other skills challenges are, are pretty cool. I think we should have a coach's skills challenge at some point, letting Lucas Jones get out there somehow and strut his stuff against some of the other great coaches here at Lynchburg. But maybe that'll be season two. Maybe that'll be next year. I need to see more on the social media with Dell, the Hornet. Lucas Jones has the one funny video where Dell is misusing the copier. It's just a good time, I think. Oh, Cam Lane has gotten hit again. So there you go. We get to give you the all-time number for Cam Lane. It's now 58 times in his Lynchburg career that he has been plunked. That's 58 in 146 games now for Cam Lane. And he is the all-time leader in that statistical category for Lynchburg. And we've been saying it for every time he gets hit. We've been, we've been saying it, and it's a lot. Six hit batters this game, by the way, for Lynchburg. So Greensboro... Pitchers have been a little wild, and that was one. There was no leaning into that or rolling with the punches. Oh, Cam Lane nearly got hit. Man, he had to take evasive action as he showed bunt, and that ball was coming square at his chest. Carson Atkins out of the way. Cam Lane at first, and now we'll get a, uh, a discussion perhaps about, I think the Greensboro coach Chris Fennessy is arguing that Carson Atkins went around on the bunt and did Atkins pull it back or not? So here's a good replay. Shows the bunt. I, I don't think that's an attempt to bunt there, in my opinion, as Atkins dodging that one. We think it's going to be a 1-0 count. But Cam Lane, the all-time leader in hit by pitch, 57 in his career. He has been hit 14 times this season. Carson Atkins has been hit in this game, his last at bat, his last plate appearance. He got plunked. So Atkins is 0 for 1, grounded out to the shortstop the other trip. Tie ball game. Atkins was showing the bunt. He'll show it again. Good one pushes it to the first base side. Off the mound pretty quickly was Grayson Curtis to grab it and toss it over. So I think kind of a two-way concept there for Cam Lane. He's hoping to place it perfectly for a base hit bunt. But if he doesn't get the accuracy exactly right, it turns into a sacrifice bunt, and that's what you had right there. I think Lane would have preferred to get that ball closer to the first baseline, make the pitcher have to range off the mound even more, tougher throw. Sometimes you got to throw over the runner then as the pitcher getting to it. But that one, Grayson Curtis, pretty spry off the bump there to come over and field it. Nice soft toss to first for the out. Brandon Garcia is one for three with an RBI. He's extended his hitting streak to 19. And the 
if he could drive in another one, Lynchburg would snatch that lead back. Hornets seem to answer when the other team scores more often than not. So here's another one we can file away if Lynchburg does. They did this in the fourth inning. Greensboro scored two in the top of the fourth. That was on the two-run homer. Lynchburg answered with two of their own. Hornets took the lead in the bottom of the fifth. Lynchburg has scored one in the top of this seventh inning, and that gets you to the 3-3 three, three tie. Lynchburg's got Cam Lane leading off at second base. Short lead right now. He'll extend it out just a little bit. Short stop behind him. Ball off the plate there on a fastball. 2-0 count for the freshman Brandon Garcia. Ben Jones due up next, and then it's Avery Neves. Lynchburg has swung the bats well, six hits, but they actually have not had a base hit since Brandon Garcia got his in the fifth inning. So a slightly dry spell. Some of that is out of their control, though, because in that stretch here, this last time through the order, Greensboro hit three batters. So it's hard to get a base hit when the pitcher's hitting you with the baseball. 3-0 count. Curtis deals. That's a good pitch. Two-seamer on the outer portion of the plate. 3-3 three, three, tie ball game with a 3-1 count for Brandon Garcia. The shortstop from Durham, North Carolina, ready here. Looks like a target in a similar location. Maybe Garcia can go with the pitch. He tried to, fouled it out of play. Full count now. Brandon Garcia with an outstanding day yesterday in the victory. Three for five. And he had a walk in there, scored a couple times, drove in one. Brandon Garcia would be looking to add to the multi-hit game total here. Fastball up and in for ball four. So the multi-hit game will have to wait for Brandon Garcia, but he is on with a walk. And Ben Jones, 0 for 2. He's been hit by a pitch, hit in his last plate appearance. Steps in. Benny Bombs can be explosive. What a great time to do something big here. Or maybe it's just taking another walk like Brandon Garcia did. Sometimes that's just what the doctor ordered. Sometimes you can try to do too much as a hitter. Taking a walk sometimes is the best option, or you get hit by the pitch like Lynchburg has done quite a bit this game. Plunked six times. It looks like that's just walk number one. I'm going to have to double check that. That's hard to believe. Lynchburg's only walked one time? Maybe so. We're getting confirmation. Lynchburg's only walked once. So Greensboro's pitchers have been a bit wild. I mean, again, they've hit six Lynchburg batters, but to only walk one through six and change innings as we're in the bottom of the seventh now with one gone, actually pretty good from the pride. And they've held Lynchburg to six hits through those six in the third innings so far. That one bounced into Ben Jones. He's ready for a 1-1 offering from Grayson Curtis. Curtis, long look at Cam Lane at second. Now he's ready to fire. Jones was swinging on that pitch right there below the knee, it looked like, and fouls it away. Ben Jones, another guy with a real pretty short, compact swing, considering he's got so much power in his swing. He's got raw strength in the weight room. He's already one of the strongest guys on the team as a freshman. Some of the guys were raving about his deadlift numbers. Just couldn't figure out how he could get so much metal off the floor. Another one that comes in low and inside that Ben Jones watches, 2-2 two -two count. It's Cam Lane at second. He got hit by a pitch. Carson Atkins put down a sacrifice bunt. That's their only out of the inning. Brandon Garcia leading off at first after a walk. First baseman playing behind Brandon Garcia. He's got a big lead over there, too. Another good eyeball from Ben Jones. He's got... Great plate discipline. That's another one for a freshman. The fact that he understands the zone and can lay off some of these pitches. He's got 19 walks to only eight strikeouts this season. That would be outstanding for anybody, but again, this is just a freshman. Ben Jones looking for another one here. 
He'll swing on this and rip it into center field. Driving Hudson Powell back, not going to get to it. Benny Bombs has exploded again. Cam Lane is in. Brandon Garcia around third is going to score. It's a two-run double for Benny Bombs. Ben Jones plates a couple, and that was the big one that Lynchburg was looking for. They surge out to the lead again, 5-3. There's that short, compact stroke from Ben Jones. Location was actually pretty good from Grayson Curtis. I think he got it at the knees, but Ben Jones going downstairs to lift one over the center fielder's head. And that is all for Grayson Curtis. Time out here as the pride goes to get a new pitcher. Ben Jones, two run double, and Lynchburg leads again 5-3. Alex Trepper, freshman from Tampa, Florida, is on. And you're getting a look somewhat obscured by his teammates standing behind there, but Alex Trepper coming at you from the sidearm angle. And always a nice option to have a multiple sidearm guys out of the bullpen, but at least one. It, it does seem like in recent memory, fans, that every college baseball team's got a sidearm or a submarine guy that they can go to. And that's an exaggeration when I say every, but it does does seem like it happens quite a bit more now lately. I think college coaches are, are, are taking a guy who, if you come in and you don't have maybe the shutdown, lights out, strikeout kind of a stuff, it's a way to give a guy an edge, give him something different. And some guys really take to it. And, and that's not to say that some players don't throw sidearm in high school. They do. I think a lot of these guys get converted when they do get to college, though. That's purely anecdotal. I have no statistical evidence to back up any of that about the rise of side armors in college. Maybe I need to go back and watch some, some video of uh, University of Lynchburg baseball. Of course, Lynchburg College back then. But watch it, you know, some, some Lynchburg baseball from the 70s and the 80s and see how many side arm slingers there were back in the day. Number 30, Avery Neves, is up, ready to face Alex Trepper. He's a junior from Tampa, Florida. He'll be facing Avery Neves, the senior from Reston, Virginia. Neves hit 419 last year, slugged 856 last season, and he led the country in walks last year. 56 free passes last year for Avery Neves. This season, he's at 35. And today, Avery Neves is one for two with a double and a hit by pitch. Struck out one time as well. 1-0 count for the All-American, Avery Neves, the two-time All-American. Long look there and hold from Trepper. Got it low on Neves. He'll tap it to the third baseman. And the out is recorded there. 5-3, Avery Neves is gone. And it's Eric Hyatt, first baseman. One for three with a strikeout. Popped out to the catcher to end the first inning. Eric Hyatt had the RBI single in the fourth inning where Lynchburg did score two. Ben Jones was forced to stay at second base. So Ben Jones had the bases clearing double, two RBI double. It is double number six on the season for Ben Jones. And it's RBIs number 19 and 20. All that for a freshman. I'm going to repeat it every time that, that he and Brandon Garcia and any other freshman for Lynchburg do something great. I'm going to keep talking about them being freshmen as, as long as I can. And then next year, 
They'll just be sophomores. It'll still be incredible if they do this stuff next year, though. 0-1 count on Eric Hyatt. Hyatt will rip that one foul. Eric Hyatt's a sophomore from Woodbridge. The future is very bright for Lynchburg. They are going to lose a lot. They're going to lose a lot of firepower. Could say that multiple times. Lynchburg, we're getting to see our, our last looks at, at some all-time greats here for the Hornets. But the cupboard is not bare by any means. Lynchburg, I don't think it'll be a rebuild situation next year. I think it'll be a reload situation next year for Lynchburg. Hyatt will send one in the direction of Coach Lucas Jones. He'll dance out of the way. Coach Jones got to work on his evasive action and dance moves a few times yesterday in the hampton Sydney game. He got scattered in that batter's box a couple times. 0-2 count as Hyatt staying alive. Two outs, Ben Jones leads off at second. Hyatt waiting on the delivery from Alex Trepper. Trepper tried his frisbee slurve and missed. Another one of those different combinations of breaking balls, that slurve. I think when people talk about the slurve, it's, it's not the same as a slider, even though it may have the same action vertical and horizontal. But a slider is thrown differently. The curve ball, you're going to get Almost that karate chop action where you're getting the side of your hand as you throw it to the batter. Same thing with the slurve, whereas the, the slider is just more of a twist. It's more of a corkscrew, kind of a spinning action. One, two count. Maybe we'll get back to that. Eric Hyatt, laser beam into center field. Ben Jones on the horse around third. No play at home. Another RBI single for Eric Hyatt. He smoked that ball. Second baseman was shaded up the middle, but it was hit so hard that even he did not have a chance. There's that short, compact swing again. That ball is through the infield in the blink of an eye. High exit velocity on that one for Eric Hyatt. Two for four day right now for Eric Hyatt. We're going to be talking about him as a Hornet on a hot streak here lately. He will definitely come up in the next broadcast because it's been more than just this game for Eric Hyatt. Swung on and ripped down the line. Fair. What a shot. Holden Fiedler turning on the first pitch he sees and sending it into the left field corner for a double. Eric Hyatt has to stay at third base. But Holden Fiedler not taking a lot of time at all. Just pumping that one down the line. That was like your top spin forehand in tennis that you put right on the uh, right on the sideline. That one hit just inside the left field foul line. Holden Fiedler, one pitch, one double. He came in off the bench. Riley O'Donovan started in that five-hole slot. Now it's Gavin Collins, two for three with a double. We're getting into that moment now where Gavin Collins could bust the door off and break it wide open. Collins. Pulls that one down the line. What a grab in left field. Brody Gardner covered a lot of ground to track that one down. On the warning track, on the left field line. Outstanding play from Brody Gardner, but damage done for Lynchburg as they take the lead back, double it up. Hornets tied 3-3 going into the inning, and now on top, 6-3. Hornets dugout and bullpen feeling the vibes here after a three-run inning. Lynchburg does it again. They answer. They, they just seem to do that. When the other team scores, the Hornets are going to turn around and score themselves. They did it in the fourth inning when Greensboro took the 2-0 lead. Hornets answered, tied it up. Lynchburg scored one in the fifth. 
Fast forward to the top of the seventh where Greensboro scores one. They take a 3-2 advantage. Lynchburg answers with three of their own. And now Hornets on top, a bit more comfortable, 6-3, to three, but certainly not out of the woods yet as Greensboro will have two more whacks at it. Connor Morehouse leading off. 0-2 count, walk one time. Did a nice job to hold the swing on the Jack Batchmore breaking ball there. I think it's a 1-1 count now for Connor Morehouse. Jack Batchmore came on in relief of Logan Tapman. Batchmore is the fourth pitcher that Lynchburg has used. And they've all been very effective. Greensboro with a pretty good inning in their last frame. It was three singles in that inning for Greensboro to score one. Morehouse out in front of that. Got a good piece of it to send it out of play into the woods. Batchmore had a play where he got his bare hand on a ball hit up the middle by Louis Barini. Couldn't keep it in the infield. That's how the run came across for Greensboro. Not charged to Batchmore, though. It'll be on Logan Tapman's record. Cue ball off the end of the bat into the hands of the new man, Ryan Long. Number four, Ryan Long inserted into the ball game at second base. And that's how you make the ball find you right there, Ryan Long recording an assist himself. So one away, it's a new hitter for Greensboro. This will be number 34, Cameron Edmonds. Cam Cameron Edmonds, number 34, will step in, a junior from Eastern Guilford High School in North Carolina. Edmonds is uh, the first offensive sub for Greensboro. He's in the spot that the first baseman, Moses Malone, was hitting in prior to this. So we get a look at Cameron Edmonds. Uh, Moses Lopez was the, uh, the first baseman. Uh, he was a left-handed hitter, so maybe the right-on-left matchup a factor for Chris Fennessy, the second-year head coach for Greensboro. You'd have to think so anyway. Cameron Edmonds has played in 32 games up to this point, started 26 of them. He's got a nice long body of work, five home runs on the season for Cameron Edmonds. And now he'll get to hit with a 3-0 count as Jack Batchmore has fallen behind. Looked like it might have been the take sign on there for Cameron Edmonds, 3-1 count. See if the power hitter turns it loose. Yeah, he did. Bouncing ball to Gavin Collins. Fields with a backhand grab and a strong throw across the diamond for Gavin Collins. Out number two. I like what Gavin Collins has done lately defensively, fans. And he's had some errors this season. Your left side of your infield is always going to have more errors, right, baseball fans? If if your shortstop and third baseman aren't leading your team in errors, that might be a problem in another area because they're going to have the toughest plays and they're going to get a lot more chances as well, you would think. So Gavin Collins, he falls in that boat. He's made some errors this season, but, man, he's made some good plays, and I think lately – Getting better and better. Strong throws across the diamond. Obviously throws well on the move. We've seen that so much from Gavin Collins all season. Here's a ball put out of play by the catcher, Miles Vacheron. And it's a 1-2 count. Pitch coming from Batchmore. Up and out. 2-2 two -two now. Batchmore ready to work quickly. That's typical from him. Here's the wind up in the pitch. Ball in the dirt for ball three. Good take from Miles Vacheron. Full count now. Batchmore deals. Got him. Strike three. Vacheron got a little piece of it, but straight into Fiedler's glove for the K. Lynchburg pitchers have struck out 12 Greensboro hitters, and the Hornets lead 6-3 moving to the bottom of the seventh inning.
what you're missing. We're going to the bottom of the eighth inning, fans. I, I misspoke there and said seventh inning. I'm living in the past. It is the eighth inning, and Lynchburg hoping this is their last time at bat, obviously, as they hold the 6-3 lead over Greensboro. So more chances to hit for guys like Cam Lane. Cam Lane was plunked in his first plate appearance. He'll be due up second. It'll be Jackson Harding in off the bench to hit for Lynchburg. He's in Logan Webster's spot. Logan Webster had a triple that was a lot of fun to watch. Logan Webster is a guy that got hit himself in this game. But it's another Jack, Jackson Harding, the key man from Keysville. He's got multi-hit games in eight of his last nine. Jackson Harding is red hot. Still, eight of his last nine, Jackson Harding has got multiple base hits. And going back to the last 10 games for Jackson Harding, He's 18 for 35. That's good for a 514 batting average. Jackson Harding, left-handed hitter. I know we will see him feature in at least one of the lineups against Guilford this Saturday. He's been a big piece for Lynchburg this year. He shares the lead in batting average right now with Josh Jorman. Those guys are hitting 375 apiece. And they've both started 26 games. This is game number 34 total for Jackson Harding. He has appeared as a sub quite a bit for Lynchburg. I think he's very comfortable doing that. He's another guy. He'll, he'll take whatever role you give him. You give him four at bats, he'll be happy with that. You give him one at bat, he'll make that work. You give him a defensive replacement role, he'll make that work. He's played an outstanding right field this season. A couple big plays for Jackson Harding. And playing some second base, too for Lynchburg, a true utility guy. Jackson Harding looks at ball one. One, two, the count. He had a lot of fans there yesterday at Hampton Sydney. Not quite a, a home game for a guy from Keysville, but Hampton Sydney a little bit closer than Lynchburg. Jackson Harding not going to continue the hitting streak, at least in this bat, as he sends a four hopper into the belly of the second baseman, Louis Barini, and he's out 4-3 for the first one of the inning. Cam Lane is up, number 34, the grad student and the Hornet Baseball Skills Champion, the, the skills competition winner, advancing to the Elite Eight. He'll have to take on some players from other Hornet athletic teams. Some very worthy competition for Cam Lane there. Swings and misses at that one. Cam Lane, left-handed hitter, right-handed thrower from Manassas, hits 290 on the season. That's the other thing I always bring up when Cam Lane gets hit by the pitch. He's the all-time leader in that, but he, he really needs to be known for his hitting prowess as well. Bermuda triangle ball that will fall foul over there as the shortstop Gavin Fleming dove after it but couldn't come up with it. Yeah, Cam Lane in his career – has put up some outstanding numbers, 126 hits in his college career. And, yeah, it's nice to be the statistical leader in something, even if it is hit by pitch, but I think Cam Lane prefers to be known as a hitter. Third on the team last year with 52 hits. He could fill up the stat sheet in a lot of ways. Here's an 0-2 offering that was so wide it missed the catcher's glove. 1-2 count coming up. For Cameron Lane. The pitcher is Stephen Dunlow for Greensboro. This is the seventh arm that they have used. Stephen Dunlow, a freshman from Oxford, North Carolina. Greensboro used 10 the first time these two ball clubs met. That was a 13 3 Lynchburg win back in March. But this game has unfolded differently. You never expect anything to be easy in baseball, you never expect a blowout. Especially when you got the undefeated streak at home. A team like Greensboro's coming in trying to snap that. 
you know, these these midweek non-conference affairs, sometimes it can be a letdown situation for a team. I think Lynchburg's done really well all season to play at a high level regardless of opponent. And you got to think for a team like Greensboro, they want to be the ones that spoil it. They want to be the ones that break the, the goose egg and give Lynchburg a loss at home. They want to be the ones to say, hey, we, we beat Lynchburg on their turf. It's kind of a Super Bowl concept. Maybe we should be saying World Series since it's baseball. But Greensboro has had that fight today. I, th I think they've played well. And the fact that it's a three-run ball game would indicate that. All of a sudden, full count here for Cam Lane. He's taken three straight in a row, but he'll swing at strike three. It's out number two for Lynchburg. Carson Atkins, the center fielder, looking for his first hit of the game. Got hit by a pitch, had a sacrifice bunt in the third plate appearance. Carson Atkins, 304 on the season. He's driven in 29. He's got 10 doubles and five home runs. Carson Atkins into the batter's box against Stephen Dunlow. Dunlow snaps off a breaking ball that missed. Carson Atkins is the team leader in doubles with 10. Riley O'Donovan's got eight. Just scrolling down the list here. Gavin Collins has six. Ben Jones has six now after a double in this game. Neves with six. Jackson Harding with six. You got a bunch of players for Lynchburg with six doubles. Atkins has 10, team leader in that category. 2-0 count. Good time to go all in on one right here. Try to hit a two-out double or more. Good fastball that missed from Stephen Dunlow. Atkins is another guy, pretty short to the ball. Uses that long frame to generate some of his power. Carson Atkins is 6'4". Might not really look like it on your screen there, but he's a tall guy. And I think he can get some leverage and some power that way rather than make it a big move at the ball with the leg kick or the big forward momentum kind of a deal. 3-1 count for Atkins. Did go after that one, but missed upstairs. Full count now with two gone in the bottom of the eighth inning. Lynchburg by three. Jack Batchmore would now be in line for the win. Instead of the save, we were thinking another save for Batch. Oh, that one hit Carson Atkins. Steven Dunlow not happy with himself there. That was a big miss. And unfortunately, it's a base runner with two outs for Greensboro. Maybe fortunately for Lynchburg as they try to pad some stats here and give Batch Moore a little bit of insurance. Hit batter number seven of the game for Lynchburg. They were averaging just under two per game in that category coming into this. Last season, Lynchburg got hit 107 times. That was good for 2.29 per game. And when you do the math, after seven hit batters today, Lynchburg might be closing in on that 2.29 number again. Just for reference, fans, Lynchburg pitchers have only hit 22 on the season. So basically, you got to go one and a half games or so to find Lynchburg hitting a batter, whereas their team gets hit almost two times per game. 1-1 one, one count on the freshman Brandon Garcia. Extended his hitting streak earlier to 19. Looking for his second knock of the game now. 1-1 one, one count on the freshman, a toss over to first base to keep an eye on Carson Atkins. Carson Atkins has 40 stolen bases in his career. Threat to run for sure. He will take off and go. Good pitch to throw on, but Atkins is safe with a feet first slide. Was a called strike, so it should be 1-2 count now. Yeah, umpire has confirmed that. 1-2 is the count with two outs. Atkins in scoring position. Garcia's got an RBI already in this game as well. That came on his single in the fifth inning. 6-3 ball game. Nine hits for Lynchburg as a team. Oh, inside corner, called strike three. Garcia is out of there. Lynchburg will look to close it down in the top of the ninth inning with a three-run lead. Don't miss the conclusion from Fox Field here in Lynchburg.
a lot of people go to the universities to find something to be a part of while getting their education. And when you come here, Lynchburg is that something, it becomes a family. It's what the school's really good at doing. Top nine here at Fox Field. Hornets looking to remain undefeated at home. 18-0 on the season so far. The ball is in the hands of the Jack. Key card out of the bullpen that Lynchburg has played all season. Jack Batchmore, this is appearance number 18 on the year. He's 5-0 with seven saves. He's looking for win number six right here. Hudson Powell swings on this one, sends it into right field. Jackson Harding is under it for the first out. It'll be seven, eight, nine due up for Greensboro. So now the eight hole hitter, Cam Watts is in there. We got a, a substitute in the ball game. Is this Alex Weber, number six? It is, it's Alex Weber. We thought we might see Alex Weber today. He's a leading hitter average wise for Greensboro. Or Adam Weber, it's Adam Weber. Sorry fans, it's Adam Weber, Adam Weber. <laughs> Started 30 games last year and hit 298. Adam Weber had a five hit ball game earlier this season and he's on a five game hitting streak. So he'll be going against Jack Batchmore. Adam Weber, sorry fans, Adam Weber, number six, a junior from Eastern Alamance High School. One, one count. Batchmore hits the outside edge with that one, one, two on Adam Weber. Looking to continue a five game hitting streak. Tough deal when you only get one look. That's what's happening right now. Weber will swing on that. Oh, on the line? No, foul ball. Foul ball. Home plate umpire came out to call it. Foul ball there. Thought Adam Weber did continue the hitting streak to seven games, or six games, rather. It's five games coming in for Adam Weber. One, two count. Long strike to Jack Batchmore. See how he pitches off of that. Knows he's got Adam Weber out front a little bit. Wind up in the deal, Weber on that. Nails it to center, but Carson Atkins is there. An elite defender, Carson Atkins, always seems to be in the right place. Chalk that one up as another occasion where Carson Atkins makes a great grab. We got another substitute in the game. This is number one, Evan Sykes. Evan Sykes, freshman from Graham, North Carolina. Last shot, trying to keep it going here for Greensboro, Evan Sykes. He homered on Monday, drove in two. Evan Sykes into the batter's box to face Jack Batchmore. Greensboro's hit some balls hard, fans. I think that's four now that they've ripped that have been taken away by Lynchburg defenders or, or, or hit right at Lynchburg defenders. 2-0 count for Evan Sykes. Jack Batchmore misses the zone. 6-3 ball game, Lynchburg on top. That one also just off the edge for Jack Batchmore. Kind of a nod of the head there. Adjustment time maybe for Batch. 3-0 count with two outs. Batchmore out of the windup, and that one did miss. Wasn't happy with it out of the hand. And it's a two-out walk. Brody Gardner will stay in the ball game. The leadoff hitter for Greensboro is one for four, but he is a guy that has hit the ball hard three times. Lasered one at the left fielder, Avery Neves. Little one hop shot to Ben Jones at second base in his third at bat, struck out in his fourth trip to the plate. Batchmore comes inside but misses there. So it's five balls in a row for Batchmore. All around the plate. I don't think any cause for concern if you're a Lynchburg fan. There is a runner on first though. Another one, similar spot but a little bit better. One, one count now for Jack Batchmore. Holden Fiedler is the catcher. Lynchburg 
around the infield. Still Eric Hyatt at first, Ryan Longs at second, Garcia short, Collins third. Gavin Collins is going to take a hop off the chest. That one was hit hard, and the first hop on the dirt shot it up at Gavin Collins' chest. You teach your infielders to ground up. That means get that glove on the ground early and play the hop from there. Gavin Collins did that. I think he was in fine position. It was just a hot shot. The first bounce on the dirt kicked up high on him. Unfortunately, I think it's going to be an E5 on Gavin Collins. Another one where the stats don't really tell you the whole story. His runner's on first and second now with two outs. Batchmore high with his first pitch. You get late in these games, a lot of traffic on the base paths, dirt gets chewed up, you get some unpredictable hops. It's all part of the deal for a third baseman. And why I mentioned earlier that you, your third baseman and your shortstop probably should have more errors than the rest of the team. Hit by pitch now. So all of a sudden, the tying run is on first base. The winning run is in the batter's box. Lynchburg would have a chance to answer in the bottom half of the ninth inning, of course. But it's a sticky situation all of a sudden. You just, you just assume these games are going to be close at the end. You really do. Lynchburg has been good in close games this season. Lynchburg in games decided by four runs or less, which is one swing of the bat, 14-5. And that tells you something, too, because Lynchburg 30-5 and five on the season. So all of their losses, all five, have been close ball games, decided by four runs or less. Lynchburg in one-run games is 6-1 and one this year. And they can win some blowout games, too. They did that yesterday against Hampton Sydney on the road, 11-0. But it's a tight one here. Bases loaded, 6-3 ball game. Jack Batchmore gets a strike across. It's a walk and a hit by pitch in the same inning for Jack Batchmore. We'll really have to dive into the record book to find the last time that happened. A one count. Batchmore is ready, though. Ball back up the middle. Garcia fields. Going to throw to first. Got him, and the ball game is over. There was some suspense there as the umpire was waiting to see if Eric Hyatt secured the baseball, but he does hang on in the end. Lynchburg hangs on. 6-3 the victory. Great stretch at first from Eric Hyatt, and then he held it there for the umpire. Outstanding play for Brandon Garcia. Jack Batchmore, maybe he wasn't at his best, but he gets win number six on the season. Lynchburg win number 31 on the year and still undefeated at Fox Field. 18-0 at home for Lynchburg. They get a key non-conference victory over Greensboro. The Hornets fall to, or excuse me, the Greensboro Pride fall to 16-19 and on the season. Kyle Haney will leave it here. We'll say so long. We hope you can join us at the ballpark Saturday as Lynchburg will be hosting Guilford in an ODAC doubleheader. First pitch for game one scheduled at noon. You can see it live at Fox or as always right here on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. <laughs>